with the different Tambor University in Ethiopia and also Pasli Stuk Donetsk National University from Ukraine. First of all, let me introduce myself first. My name is Nopita and I will be hosting for today event. And now please let me welcome our special guest for today. Welcome to the Honorable Professor Valeria Limar as a Doctor of Economic Science and also Associate Professor, Acting Head of International Innovation from Fasil Stuk Donetsk National University and also Honorable Professor Kek Palim Kibe Kishaw as a Lecturer of Civil And also Honorable Professor Vivia Diel Pianto as a Lecturer of Graphic Design Department from Stockholm University in Indonesia. And last but not least, also to the Honorable Forecast and Audience. Further for the Square of the Morning Agenda, we will sing our national anthems. Continue opening speech by Mr. Ahmad Zainuri as the Dean of Faculty Entrepreneurship. And after that, we will catch a new a new knowledge from our special guest today and after presentation has PM. Yeah. For first question, we will listening Indonesia National Anthem. So Miss Febri, you can start for this Indonesia National Anthem. Thank you. Okay, Miss Novita, can I start this opening speech now? Indonesia National Anthem first. Sure. Yeah. Your voice clearly. Hello, Miss Novita. responsible person for the conduction of this international webinar international event to the honorable professor Ahmad Zainuri for time opening speed yeah so for professor Ahmad the time is yours thank you okay uh, thank you so much for Miss Novita can you hear my voice with clearly Miss Novita yes it's clearly sure it's okay <clears throat> good afternoon ladies and gentlemen Please introduce myself. My name is Mr. Ahmad Zainuri. I'm I'm head of entrepreneurship study program in Stekom University. 
we apologize in advance. Our rector cannot join in this webinar international event, and I will take over this opening speech. Thank you to all of you who took part in this event. Okay, the honorable our speaker today, Professor Valeria Lima, as Doctor of Economic Science, Associate Professor, Acting Head of International Relations and Foreign Policy from Francis Donetsk National University, Ukraine. And uh, the Honorable Professor Kevya Lev Kivel Bissau as a lecturer of civil engineering from Deber Deber University, Ethiopia. And then Prof. Professor B.P. Ardi Alpianto as a lecturer of graphic design department from Stecom University, Indonesia. And also the honorable all students and all audience. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, may I first take this occasion to pay tribute to all of the audience of the uh, of this webinar international event with the title "The Advantage of Green Engineering," held by Stecom University in collaboration with Deber Tabor University. Ethiopia and Francis Tutus Donetsk National University in Ukraine. It is a great pleasure and an honor for me to deliver welcome Sima at the opening of this webinar international event. May I first to take this opportunity to express my gratitude and appreciation as well as extend cordial welcome to all of the audience, in particular all the speakers of today's event. Okay, first of all, first of all, I would like to express my gratitude to our God, a blessing and mercy that we could assemble in this international webinar, the advantage of green engineering. The honorable all speaker guest today and all audience, I would like to say thank you very much to all speakers that you will present insightful ideas according to your fields of expertise in this reputation and it is a great pleasure to welcome all of you to in this webinar. I believe that our speakers will improve knowledge and experiences of all participants and provide significant scientific contribution. Ladies and gentlemen, our today's event will discuss the opportunities of the advantage of green engineering. So, for your information about the advantage of green engineering, why green engineering? We have many reasons, such as save the world and we can change the world together and also moving toward uh, a low carbon era. Like one of the opinion I read, when it comes to reaching net zero emissions, no one should be left behind. Let's work together on developing innovation technologies to green engineering. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, I hope through this webinar international event, we can get more information about the advantage of green engineering. To conclude, I would like to extend my appreciation to the International Affair Organization of Stecom University for making this webinar. And finally, I wish you enjoyed today. Let's pray that all our efforts remain in the blessing of God. Amen. Okay, thank you so much, Ms. Novita. Please, you can take over this event until next. Many thanks. Okay, thank you very much for the conduction and for the sentence. Yeah, ladies and gentlemen, now we will begin the first session of our webinar today. And the keynote speaker for this session is uh, Professor Valeria Limar from Brazil Stuttgart National University in Ukraine. Yeah, welcome to the first keynote speaker speed session for Professor Valeria. And also, it's my honor to be to have you here with us in this morning. Event. Thank you so much for the stem. Yeah. Dr. Valeria, the time is yours. Thank you. Uh, good morning, dear colleagues. So uh, I can uh, begin. I will be the first, yes? Okay, thank you very much. Uh, 
Uh, now I'm going to share my presentation. Uh, do you see the presentation, dear colleagues? Tell me, please. Yes, we see both. Okay, thank you very much. Uh, firstly, uh, firstly, I want uh, to say uh, thank you um, for the um, uh, opportunity to share my thoughts with you. And secondly, I want to present uh, the Circle Economy New Action Plan uh, of, European Un of European Union. Um, I want to say that uh, um, this plan uh, for Ukraine uh, or is uh, extremely important uh, because, uh, as you know, uh, on twenty uh, third uh, of uh, June uh, two thousand twenty two, uh, Ukraine uh, became uh, the candidate for membership in the European Union. That is why their experience uh, in such field uh, for Ukraine uh, would be very important, especially after, yeah, especially. Uh, after Ukraine will win the war that uh, Russian Federation starts against uh, against our country, and uh, I think that uh, green technologies, green engineering, uh, would be very important uh, for recover for recovering our infrastructure. Um, on my first degree, uh, I'm uh, the economist. Um, uh, that is why I want uh, to talk about economic ex. ex uh, aspects and about economic effect uh, that um, uh, green technologies uh, have on uh, our uh, everyday life. So uh, let me introduce um, the results of my investigation. Uh, there is only one planet Earth, uh, yet by 2050 the world will be consu consuming uh, as if there were three. Global consumption materials such as biomass, uh, fossil fuels, uh, metals uh, and other materials uh, is expected to double in the next 40 years, uh, while annual waste generation is projected to increase by 70% by 2050. It's half of, top of total greenhouse uh, gas emission and more than uh, 90 uh,
the first international seminar on smart molecule of natural resources 2019 in Malang, Indonesia. Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Uh, the smart 2019 uh, officially open. the more sophisticated instrument in Thailand, so... When you kill signs, your silicon content is so low. Because for some reason, your silicon will also evaporate in a different form. Mereka melihat bahwa Adam is actually inducing apoptosis and killing the cells via apoptosis. between these two domains that make this domain start to convert and change the information.
Tes, tes. Tes, tes. Tes. National Seminar on Smart Molecule of Natural Resources 2019 in Malang, Indonesia.
Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Uh, the Smart 2019 uh, officially open. Mereka melihat bahwa Adenthias is actually inducing apoptosis and killing the cells via apoptosis. Associate the interaction between these two domains that make this domain start to convert and change the conformation. So the molecular structure is in the right side, so sometimes it's difficult to understand it.
The fourth international seminar on smart molecule of natural resources, Asian Federation of Biotechnology 2022, will come shortly. Please take your position. Excellencies, distinguished guests, participants, ladies and gentlemen. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Good morning, selamat pagi. wabarakatuh. Best wish to us all. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome once again to the fourth is Smart IFOB 2022 conference on the second day. Allow me to extend our warmest greeting to our prominent speakers and chairs, the Honorable Rector, Universitas Brawijaya, Profesor Widodo, the Honorable Head of Sponagins, Profesor Fachia, the Honorable Ismart Chairman, Dr. Nia Kurnianisi, the Honorable Ismart Keynote Speakers, the Honorable Ismart Invited Speakers, and all speakers in attendance of the Fort Ismart FOB 2022. Let me introduce myself first. My name is Ahmad Haishnalfal, and I will be your master of ceremony for today's eSmart. I would like to remind you to rename your profile into room A, B, C, or D underscore full name, since you will be assigned to join the breakout room after the plenary speech. Also, we will distribute the attendance list in the meeting chat. Please fill the form out. Thank you. Before we start our agenda, I would like to explain our conference schedule for today. There are opening ceremony, keynote speaker speech, wording of certificates for keynote speakers, presentation from research hub, break, oral parallel presentation, and at the end, closing ceremony and awards. Ladies and gentlemen, before we begin, let us spend a few seconds to pray together. Therefore, a smart IFOB 2022 will run smoothly. Finished. For the next schedule is plenary speech. And our keynote speakers for this morning are Professor Fachia, PhD from Brawijaya University, Indonesia, Associate Professor TSCSM Dr. Nick Ahmad Nizam Nick Malek from University Technology Malaysia and Professor Montarab Yamabai PhD from School of Biotechnology Institute of Agricultural Technology Suranari University of Technology Thailand On this occasion the plenary session will be moderated by Dr. Regina Putri Virgirinia from Uni from Brawijaya University Kindly be invited to stage to Dr. Regina Putri Virgirinia to handle the plenary session.
Okay, thank you very much for a kind introduction. So before I'm starting today's session, I would like to introduce myself. My name is Regina. I belong to University of Brawijaya, Smonegan Research Centers. And today I will be serve as your moderator for the keynote speakers. And in this morning, we have uh, three keynote speakers, including the Professor Fathia, Associate Professor Nick Ahmad Nizam, and also Professor Monsarab Yamabai from the Thailand. And then uh, we would like to uh, start. But before that, I would like to explain uh, today we have a three keynote speaker and each. Sorry for the technical thing. Uh, so each presenter will be uh, deliver the talk in 30 minutes. And by the end of the third speaker, we will have 15 minute discussion. So for the first keynote speaker, Without any further ado, we would like to start. And for the Professor Fathia, time is yours. And before that, I would like to uh, explain a little bit about the curriculum vitae of Professor Fathia. So I would like to have the committee to help me to show the screen. So Professor Fatia is belong to the Department of Biology, Faculty of Mathematics and Natural Science, Brawija University. And she got the PhD from NIBB School of Life Science, the Graduate University for Advanced Studies, Okazaki, Japan. And next, please. And also currently she is the head of the Smonekin Research Center here in Brawija University. Next, please. And Professor Fatia, a very active for publication and currently she already has 183 publication available in Google Scholar. And there are a lot of uh, distinguished honor and award, including the active researcher in the category of high reputable scientific article in the field of health and medicine. And also, she is uh, actively write a book, and you can uh, read a lot of her book here in the slide. Okay, that's all for the short curriculum video of Professor Fatia. Now you can please start the presentation. Okay, thank you for Regina. Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. This morning, I would like to present uh, some review for my group research. So the title in this presentation is Overview, Exploration of Natural Bioactive Compound as Antioxidant and Anti-Aging uh, for Healthy Cell Nutrition. That we know, uh, nutrition is uh, a key factor for regulating healthy living through metabolism, growth, repair, and development of cells, and also in tissue and uh, throughout uh, our body, as well as for defense against disease. As we know, uh, the same type of food consumed by different individual cause uh, and then uh, affect to different effects. The diet is uh, determined by the composition of nutrient consumed, how the nutrition can work to influence the occurrence of disease and repairing abnormality mechanism and then become abnormal. So one focus in my research group is nutrigenetic uh, and nutrigenomic. That uh, in nutrigenetic, we focus in personal nutrition. And in nutrigenomic, uh, we explore the mechanism uh, inside our body, even in tissue or inside cell. Uh, induced by a nutrition to the mechanism uh, to control the disease or 
uh, to defend again uh, the uh, disease vector. So uh, for the day talks, uh, we focus to cellular nutrition. Uh, start in last year or two years ago, we focus not only in tissue uh, analysis, but also in cell line analysis. Usually in my group, uh, we use the uh, animal model, but for right now, we focus in uh, cell line model in vitro. So uh, the healthy cell uh, provides structure of the our body, and then the, take uh, some nutrition uh, when we eat some food, uh, especially for healthy food, and then convert to into energy and perform the special function. Remember, uh, the body cell get tired because a lot of processing inside cell and also tissue. So they also get covered with toxin from food, water, and air, causing the metabolism to slow down and making it very hard the body to process and absorb all the essential nutrition of food. So we need to uh, control our composition nutrition for ourselves. Uh, and then, uh, no, right now, uh, a lot of uh, center research and also book uh, talk about cellular nutrition because uh, the nutrition, firstly, uh, insert to our body is controlling and regulating inside cell. After that, in tissue and uh, circulating uh, from blood uh, circulation to all of our body. So what is the difference between healthy and unhealthy cell in terms of nutrition? We can see in here, this is the healthy cell. When uh, the nutrient, uh, after absorbing and then uh, circulating and then targeting cell, uh, the nutrient can get in normally. Uh, in here, we, we know we, uh, the nutrient can enter uh, Draw uh, recept uh, receptor and calcium pump or ca natrium pump, and also uh, another pore in membrane cells. And then, after uh, regulation inside cell, the waste product can get out normally. The membrane cell we know is uh, very soft and permeable to select which uh, the cell need the nutrient and then get out the waste product. Uh, different or uh, in unhealthy cells are likely to exhibit altered proliferation rate and then compare to their healthy counterpart. Unhealthy cell only partially and then not enter nutrient and remove some product because uh, in here, the cell membrane is become hard and rigid. So we need uh, the healthy cell. Especially uh, we know uh, our body is, uh, we have a uh, skin cells, not only in outside our body, but also uh, among in, uh, for example, discative tract. Uh, in there, a lot of epithelials also. Uh, the skin health and beauty is considering uh, one of the principal factors representing overall well-being and then the perception of health in humans. Several anti-aging strategies have been developed during the last year. So uh, this time in our uh, group also uh, focusing in aging. 
as far as we know, uh, the skin aging is a complex biological process influenced by combination endogenous and intrinsic factor. Uh, the cellular nutrition, uh, hopefully, can remove uh, active toxin inside cell and also able to absorb uh, all of the essential nutrient needed of functional properly. So, for example, in young people, uh, sometimes the uh, cell inside the body is uh, all older than the old age of this person. So we focusing uh, research in this kind of cells. So. We can see in this slide the underlying mechanism of aging. This is uh, the endogenous and extrinsic factor can induce the defect of, uh, in level cellular. So after uh, even in endogenous or extrinsic factor, uh, the tissue regeneration, uh, we can check in here the inflammation because the if uh, the cellular become uh, aging or before apoptosis, uh, the factor of some inflammation uh, cytokine, we can using uh, as a biomarker to identify when the cell is become uh, old, then usually or become uh, aging and before apoptosis, or the cell is will change uh, switch on or switch off to be uh, metastase or apoptosis. <clears throat> As the system are not uh, 100 percent efficiency, cell always contains some and repairing damage that lead to activate the stress response and upregulated of a cell mechanism to remove the damage or to prevent the cell deficiency. This is the uh, four layer uh, when the cells aging, uh, cellular mechanism for aging. We can see in here, We have uh, one in here is the uh, cellular aging mechanism uh, commonly, generally. So we can uh, see in here some disease uh, defect in physical function. And then the person is uh, uh, getting metabolic syndrome or cardiovascular disease, cancer and other disease. And the second layer, uh, we can do the dietary uh, caloric restriction. In Muslim uh, religion, we can do the fast. Uh, in Ramadan also is good, or we can doing fast in uh, Monday and Tuesday. is also uh, good for our healthy and uh, aging uh, level, uh, cellular level. So the name is a caloric restriction. So we can do research in here to give the nutrition uh, one day, for example, in the morning with nutrition, but uh, next day, uh, no nutrition uh, like this. And then uh, in uh, three, la three layer, we can see in here between healthy, uh, differences between healthy, a cell and its cell. We can uh, show in here, uh, in its cell, when I mentioned before, in young people, some uh, cell sometimes is uh, older than his or her age. So the cell is become insufficient to mechanism uh, and also uh, stress especially in reticulum endoplasmic is become stressed because uh, confusing about the communication inside cell and also uh, among cells. The last one is failure biological molecular in here. 
we can see the DNA damage, telomere attrition, and replicacy uh, DNA uh, uncontrolling, and also mechanism uh, synthesis protein uh, uncontrolled also. So we can see in this uh, uh, slide, uh, communication uh, between uh, tissue and also effect about the abnormal communication uh, between tissue and uh, inside cell or among cells. We can see in here, we, we can focus uh, the analysis of the research. For example, in endocrine metabolic alternation, uh, we can uh, choose uh, neurodegenerative disease, metabolic disease, cancer, or uh, CVD disease. And what's uh, the kind of the research can explore deeply? For example, in here, the reticulum endoplasmic dysfunction and mitochondria dysfunction that we know mitochondria dysfunction is a short of the energy of not only our cell, but also for our body to metabolism to anything. And then, and I mentioned before, we also can uh, focus in inflammation because uh, some theory and also some uh, uh, research that have uh, confirmed that uh, when the cells become etching, is uh, inflammation also induce the etching. So not only we focus in the cyclic cell or cyclic cell in in there biomarker uh, cyclic cell and also biomarker in induce uh, or related with inflammation. Uh, the inflammation uh, connects with a senescent cell and apoptosis. So when we choose research about aging, so uh, this area for this and this, uh, and then inflammation and senescent apoptosis, and also and then adjimate, you must uh, taking uh, deeply absorbs uh, evaluation or determination in there. Here is, uh, then I mentioned before, the mitochondria dysfunction is very important uh, because uh, in mitochondria dysfunction is related with uh, other hallmark of the aging. In here, because uh, we know is ROS, uh, become up and down, and in mitochondria, remember, all uh, us uh, most of the uh, energy genes is in mitochondria, not in chromosome or gene inside nucleus. So mitochondria is very important. If gene related with energy is defect in mitochondria, so the cell also is defect. Is cell defect, also the tissue is defect. Our body also defect. In Indonesia, I saw some uh, baby, baby bones already off the skin. So when uh, in there, I think it's interesting to explore deeply why the baby born is become old. Oh, about the time, who moderator? Oh, it's okay. <laughs> so this is the communication between nuclear uh, genome and mitochondrial genome. If there are any abnormality, though the deficiency in mitochondrial in encode subunit, so become dysfunction mitochondrial and energy is become going down. This is uh, some expansion theories, uh, example theory, the aging cell level uh, related with obesity. 
this is the postulate of normal white uh, for normal adipocyte. This is for uh, obesity, visceral, obe uh, vis visceral fat, for example. It's become proliferate uh, and differentiate abnormal. So this uh, aging process is, I mentioned before, we can explore the cytokine related with uh, immune response inside this uh, adipocyte cell in obesity case. In my, in my research study, uh, we have a collaboration with uh, Professor James Robert uh, Green from SUT. He's a professor in biochemistry in that. Uh, maybe during four years ago, until now still ongoing because uh, James uh, focus in exploration uh, rise in Thailand and my group is focused in uh, pigmented rice in Indonesia. So we lucky we have a, a great team in my research group. Uh, the pigmented rice in Indonesia have a variety of pigmented rice uh, like brown, red, purple, and blacks. Uh, we predict in the first uh, research four years ago uh, in the Indonesian pigmented rice have a lot of the metabolic secondary uh, bioactive compound that can control some disease, for example, hyperlipidemia, hyperglycemia, uh, diabetic, or cancer and another uh, metabolic disorder. So recently our study saw that red model dyslipidemia, this uh, dyslipidemia red model, uh, uh, red model is uh, the formula to make this uh, model is Owen patent. Uh, now uh, we use uh, the another receiver. So the red model of this lipidemia treated with uh, total anthocyanin black rice uh, and then success reducing the molecular pathway that uh, susceptibility with this lipidemia disease. And also we have uh, explored the Indonesian red red anthocyanin as antioxidant, anti-diabetic and uh, this uh, bioactive compound as inhibitor age and risk interaction. Now, right now, we're focusing in ferulic acid of Indonesian purple rice. This is the real Indonesian purple rice because uh, uh, result, this purple rice is a crossing breed from Indonesian black rice, East Java Indonesian black rice, and white rice in from East Java also. So uh, this ferulic acid have a, a lot of uh, composition, uh, high nutrition value. So I will show to you uh, the result of our screening in some of the pigmented uh, rice from Indonesia, uh, from Sumatra, Jawa, and also some is from Nusa Tenggara, East Nusa Tenggara, and from Sulawesi. We have uh, a lot of this uh, result with specific, it's uh, kind of the variety of the pigmented rice. This is the black rice special because we, Firstly, we focus in black rice because a lot of black rice a variety in Indonesia. And this is the result that I mentioned before uh, inside of the dyslipidemia model. We also in here uh, using the black rice uh, can reduce the visceral uh, fat in 
dyslipidemia model and also in obesitas models. The other group uh, in my study uh, research is uh, red rice. We uh, already uh, explore some uh, variety red rice, uh, Indonesian red rice, especially in Jawa and also in East uh, Nusa Tenggara. Uh, we found uh, this uh, bioactive compound and in red rice Indonesia, uh, Indonesian red rice, uh, controlling, succeed controlling the mechanism or biomarker related with uh, diabetes. Uh, so we propose, recommend to uh, community, if you have uh, diabetic uh, disease in your family, uh, good for you, for all of you to eat uh, the red rice. But if your uh, family have uh, obesity or hypercholesterol, better eat uh, using black rice. The next is, uh, this is the new one. We focus because even very rare uh, purple and brown rice, we still focus the new uh, breed in Indonesia to explore the content inside that. And also we want to explore deeply related with aging and stress uh, inside our body. We already, uh, in Indonesia, we have a madras, is actually the real brown rice. Uh, but the other brown rice, for example, UP brown rice and lawang brown rice is actually is white rice, but only uh, apa? Uh, only one time to Grinding, not two time because in in white rice sometimes more than two time to grinding become white and put uh, the other chemical to be a white. So the brown rice for UB and lawang is only one grinding. This is ne? actually the brown rice in Indonesia only madras until now. But the purple rice is is this the new one uh, from East Java, one village in East Java special uh, crossbreed uh, the black rice and white rice to be uh, we can get the uh, purple rice. So, as I mentioned before, yesterday my student. Uh, PhD student Wijayanti already uh, present some data in here, but I repeat again uh, because uh, she want to focusing to analysis as antimicrobial, anti inflammasi and also anti aging This is the maybe you can see in your uh, laptop is become. Uh, Purple, but in here <laughs> become uh, brown. Oops, balik <laughs> Yeah, uh, she use uh, some bacteria, uh, TP murium and monocytogen. <laughs> the Pyrrolic acid from Indonesian purple rice so different uh, effect in both of the bacteria. Uh, one bacteria is making biofilm formation and then cell become debris. The other is making the pore formation and osmotic lysis in this group. So uh, my student uh, can 
predict in here in her research uh, his uh, ferulic acid from uh, purple rice is has uh, activity as antimicrobial and then she also explore as anti-inflammatory uh, using uh, in silico analysis and as anti-aging analysis uh, not only by enzymatic using the tyrosinase and collagenase activity in here uh, she also confirmed the result using uh, this uh, uh, enzymatic analysis by in silico so from her research, she completely confirmed that uh, ferulic acid have uh, indicating uh, as anti-inflammatory and anti-aging activity. So the function of bio, uh, the conclusion so far, because this is ongoing research, uh, the function of bioactive compound of Indonesian pigmented rice in black rice uh, the black rice and oceanin have many biological functions to control metabolic disorder such as uh, anti-obesity, anti-adipogenesis, anti-inflammation, antioxidant, and also reducing the level of cholesterol, uh, oxidative stress, and visceral fat mass. The red rice, Indonesian red rice, uh, anthocyanin, and bran Pinosembrin have function as anti-diabetic, anti-inflammatory, antioxidant, and inhibiting of rich and ages pathway. The last one, purple rice, uh, we explore ferulic acid of purple rice indicated as antimicrobial and anti-aging. This program is ongoing study in other students, in vitro and also in vivo groups. Okay, the last one, thank you for all of you. Uh, and also I would like to thank to all keynote speaker and inviting speaker and all participant from five uh, country. I hope you enjoy our meeting uh, yesterday and today. Wassalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Okay, thank you very much, Professor Fathia, for the great talk. So before we moving on for the second speakers, I would like to ask uh, all participants, if possible, to turn on the camera because we would like to take a picture very soon. And I would like to ask some help from the Master of Ceremony to guide us. Okay, thank you for the moderator and uh, Professor Fachia as the first uh, keynote speaker. And we would like to uh, ask to the all attendants and participants to turn on your camera and take a picture. Okay, get ready. We will take a picture from page one. One, two, three. Okay, next, page two. Everybody on the page two, please get ready. One, two, three. Okay, on. Uh, okay, thank you for uh, attendance, and I will be returning it to uh, Dr. Regina Putrasukinian. Okay, thank you. So now we are ready to listen to the second speaker. 
So we already got a uh, Professor Nizam, I guess. So Professor Nizam, are you joining us already? Yes, uh, I'm here. Okay. Thank you for joining us in the fourth eSmart on the day two. Before we are starting, I would like to ask the committee to show the curriculum video for Professor Nizam. So I would like to introduce to all the attendant uh, the curriculum video of Professor Nizam. So currently he is belong to the Center for Sustainable Nanomaterial or CS Nano and also the Department of Bioscience, Faculty of Science, University Technology of Malaysia. He got a PhD from the University Technology Malaysia in the field of study of chemistry. And also he is a very active for the publication. And until now, he already published 191 publications available from Google Scholar, and also several honors and awards, including the Kurita Overseas Research Grant for the Best Research Award 2021. And on the today's occasions, uh, Professor Nizam will deliver his uh, presentation with the title of Exploring Bio-Inspired Green Metal Nanoparticle Synthesis Using a Plant Extract. So for Professor Nizam, you can share your screen and time is yours. Hey, can you see the slide? Yeah, we can see. Okay, right. Um, so thank you, Dr. Regina, as a moderator for today. Um, Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. And good morning, everyone. Uh, it's good to be here. Uh, thanks to the committee of the uh, International Seminar on Smart Molecule on Natural Resources uh, and FOP, uh, in collaboration with FOP. Uh, and, and thanks to all of the audience. Okay, um, so I'm Dr. Ahmad Nizam from University of Technology of Malaysia. Malaysia. Um, I'm a director of the Center for Sustainable Materials and also the associate professor at the Department of Body Sciences, Faculty of Science. And actually, my background is uh, chemistry. So um, in this center, the aim of the center is to uh, explore. Um, research regarding the uh, sustainable nanomaterials. Okay, the, it's not just only nanomaterials, so we are trying to come up with the nanomaterials that is safe to human, um, either by uh, uh, synthesizing uh, using the biological compound, or the application is on the uh, human, okay, and also for the environment. Okay, so that's why if you see the topic here that I will give to you, is the exploring bio-inspired green matter nanoparticles synthesis using plant extract. Okay, so a little bit information um, about the uh, matter nanoparticles. Uh, hope you can see the my next slide, Dr. Regina. Next, please. Already. Okay, so the the, the because. Uh, sometimes when I'm using Zoom, uh, the slides uh, will not appear. So hopefully that the, the slide will appear here. Okay. Okay. So now it's talking about the metal nanopartic nanoparticle. Uh, it's actually fall under uh, nanotechnology. So what is nano? Uh, it is a very small size. Okay. So if you can see here, the tennis ball is, is around. Uh, 10 cm, 10 cm, okay, or 10 to the power of 8 uh, nanometers. And we go into a smaller size, okay, cell, for example, is 10 to, to the power of 4 and around 10 to the power of 5 nanometer. And then um, if you see here, the protein and A also considered as uh, uh, in the range of uh, nanometer. And those are here, okay, you see. You can see my cell, liposome, membrimer, polano shell, content dot, dot uh, polymers. So those are examples of the uh, nanoparticle. Um, it is actually in the size of uh, 
nanometer which is 10 to the power of negative 9 uh, meter so it's very small uh, this nanometer nanoparticle can be divided into two. One is uh, organic nanoparticle, another one is inorganic nanoparticle. So organic nanoparticle composed of uh, mostly the, the structure composed of uh, hydrocarbon, uh, C and also H, uh, like my cell, liposome and also dendrimer. But for the inorganic uh, nanoparticles, they are mostly come from the metal, okay, uh, oxide form. So those are the example of metal nanoparticle, which is silver, titanium dioxide, or titania, zinc oxide, copper oxide, or gold, or aurum. So these are example of the metal, metal nanoparticles and the application, uh, uh, application of this metal nanoparticles. For example, here silver is known as uh, antimicrobial agent, okay, and also antiviral and also anti-cancer. Anti uh, one of the application of the silver nanoparticles is to uh, as a coating uh, in the pain uh, for the anti anti bio falling or anti uh, bacterial anti bacterial pain and uh, gold uh, nanoparticle for example it has uh, it can be used as a cancer therapy that livery biosensor and also antimicrobial agent so those are examples of the uh, application of these metal particles uh, in, in the current application. Okay, uh, the market of the metal nanoparticle is very huge. So it's predicted in 2026, there are increasing of the market. Okay. This is actually due to the um, rising focus of government on nanotechnology research. Uh, so most of the, most of the uh, Funding is for the nanotechnology. Uh, the growing popularity of gold nanoparticles and also silver nanoparticles in the pharmaceutical and healthcare industry, and increasing application areas of the nanoparticles, uh, like as antimicrobial agent, antiviral agent, uh, for coating, drug delivery, and so on. However, uh, the toxicity of these nanoparticles or nanomaterials. Uh, is caused due to the nanoparticles is expected to restrain this market. So the because it is metal, so we know that the metal is uh, toxic to human and also environment, especially at a high concentration or at a high amount. And for the growing pharmaceutical and healthcare industry, expected to offer significant growth opportunity to manufacturers of metal nanoparticles. Okay, so uh, these nanomaterials can be synthesized or can be produced by many techniques, by various techniques. It can be divided into two, uh, either top to bottom technique or bottom to up uh, technique. Top to bottom meaning that uh, it, the nanoparticles is produced from the large particle and uh, we give some energy and it will reduce to the nano size. For example, here using physical technique uh, by ball milling, chemical etching, desaturation, also sputtering. Um, and for the bottom up is um, it's come from the ion. For example, like a silver nitrate, the source of the ion is silver nitrate. So the silver nitrate is uh, uh, if you put it in the solution, so it, it will produce silver plus Ag plus, and this Ag plus is very small size and then it will form a nanoparticle once we uh, perform the synthesis technique. Example of the uh, synthesis technique is chemical or electrochemical synthesis, precipitation, soil gel, laser pyrolysis and so on. However, uh, if you see here, the problem with this uh, chemical or physical technique uh, will produce a toxic uh, compound. Okay. Uh, for example, like this one, if you see here, this is the typical process of uh, bottom to up technique in producing silver nanoparticle. So we start with silver uh, nitrate here. Um, it, it is a precursor of the silver plus, and then it needs sodium citrate or sodium borohydrate uh, as a reducing agent. Uh, however, this reducing agent, they, they have their own problems which is dangerous and expensive chemical. Uh, 
uh, and also we need to have a wastewater treatment if we want to produce this in the large scale. So these are two problems uh, that hinder the uh, large production of the silver nanoparticle. Uh, however, the silver nanoparticle uh, or other metal nanoparticle can be synthesized using uh, biological compound or uh, using a green synthesis technique. For example, like bacteria, plant extract, and also fungus. Actually, this biomolecules or this bioresource is not... Uh, uh, actually, they are used as bioreducing agent. As a reducing agent, they can replace chemically reducing agent. Inside these biomolecules, there are no silver. So we, we actually, in this method, we are not... Uh, extracting the silver or other nano, uh, metal nanomaterials, nanoparticle, from the bio biological compound. But we use this biological compound as a reducing agent uh, from Ag plus to Ag0. Okay, so this is the um, biosynthesis. These are the methods of the nanoparticle synthesis, like I told you, okay, uh, chemical synthesis, physical method, and also biological synthesis. Okay, for the chemical synthesis, it involves chemical reaction okay, or uh, using electrosynthesis technique. Okay. And then for the physical method, for example, like laser ablation, we have a metal, uh, uh, bulk metal, uh, and then uh, once we give a laser, so it will reduce to the uh, small particle. Okay. Um, however, uh, the problem with the laser ablation, uh, we need to have a high energy and also we need to have a sophisticated uh, instrument. Uh, for vertical uh, synthesis, okay, we just add the uh, uh, extract of the uh, vertical compound. Okay, for example, like plant extract, we put it in the silver uh, nitrate solution and then after that, um, we optimize some of the parameters and we got this uh, silver, we got this metal nanoparticle. Okay. And also, it's considered as green, um, green technique, and it is safe to. Uh, it is considered as safe to human and also environment. Okay, so uh, so this is the process of the biosynthesis of silver nanoparticle. So it's come from silver silver nitrate, and it will it will uh, reduce to silver nanoparticle. Okay, so this sodium borohydride can be replaced by uh, various biological sources. Okay, for example, the fruit extract uh, from the bacteria, uh, honey, uh, fungi, plant extract, and also microalgae. Okay, so those, uh, these biological resources, they have uh, chemical com compound or active compounds that can uh, react similar to the sodium borohydride. Um, so the selection of these biological resources is very important before we can use it to reduce uh, this silver plus to the silver particle, we need to select uh, this, this bioresource based on the high reducing ability, high antioxidant activity, or in the plant, plant extract, there is a high flavonoid and sulfonylic compounds or uh, contents, and it is abundant. Okay, uh, the raw material is abundant and easy to grow or easy to produce it in large uh, amount. Okay, so we have done this. Uh, we have done this cooperative study of uh, some of the important local uh, herbs in Malaysia. Okay, uh, we have five of them. Okay, uh, and then actually we, we, have, we have done this experiment and the results has been um, presented in the uh, previous conference. Okay. So those are the uh, plant, uh, local plant, local Malaysian plant uh, that have actually uh, famous with the uh, application uh, in, in various application, especially uh, for the healthcare uh, application. Okay, uh, and then we took this leaf of this uh, plant, okay, and then we determine the antioxidant activity Okay, using the PPH assay, and also we determine the reducing uh, ability uh, based on the FRAP 
or very reducing uh, frag, very reducing ability. Okay. Uh, and then this is the result that we found. Okay. Uh, we found out that uh, there is a good correlation between the antioxidant activity and also reducing ability of this plant extract with the formation of silver nanoparticle. So if you want to know whether this silver nanoparticle can be synthesized effectively, effectively can be synthesized from this plant, uh, we, it, we need to uh, characterize the uh, formation of the silver nanoparticle using UV visible uh, spectrophotometer. So if we, we, if we found out that there are peak around 440 and the peak is higher than others, so we assume that the plant can effectively uh, synthesize the silicon particle. So in this case, uh, the Persicaria odorata plant or kesum leaf, uh, in Indonesia we call it as kesum or daun laksa, uh, it has a really high antioxidant activity and also really high reducing activity as compared to other uh, plant, plant extract here. And it's also can, uh, it gave the highest peak uh, at around 440 nanometer. So uh, from this experiment, we can conclude that there are good correlation between the antioxidant activity and also reducing ability of the plant extract with the formation of silver, silver nanoparticle. And also uh, we need to make sure that if we want to select the suitable plant to produce the silver nanoparticle or other metal nanoparticle, we need to analyze the plant uh, firstly and in terms of the uh, total flavonoid compound, total flavonoid compound, antioxidant activity, reducing ability, and so on. Uh, okay. So these are the mechanism of the uh, silver nanoparticle. Okay. Uh, the good thing about using this uh, plant extract is that uh, the phytochemical compounds inside the uh, plant extract, for example, like quercetin here, uh, is not just only acting as the uh, reducing agent, but it also can stabilize the silver nanoparticle. But the most important for the nanoparticle is that uh, it will not um, aggregate or it, it will not agglomerate with each other, uh, and then it will uh, maintain the uh, particle in the nano size. Uh, so uh, we need to have a stabilizing agent or capping agent to make sure that these particles uh, uh, retain the size in, in nano size. Okay. So, uh, but uh, as compared to the chemical synthesis, uh, if we use sodium borohydrate, we need to remove sodium sodium borohydrate, and then we need to add other uh, compound, for example, like surfactant or polymer uh, as a stabilizing agent. Uh, as the, as the agent. So there are actually additional steps nah, when we use chemical uh, reducing agent. And this silver nanoparticle can be applied as a wound dressing, antibody falling pain, antibacterial coating, coating operation room, or antibacterial active ingredient in cosmetic product. Okay. So if you can see here, the uh, uh, mechanism is actually, uh, it can be considered as uh, uh, dual attacks, uh, uh, attacks of the bacteria come from the dual antibacterial agent. One is the AGNP, another one is the phytochemical compounds itself. Okay, those are the, uh, actually the, uh, I'm listing here the list of the papers that we have published uh, so far because we have started this project in 2018. And there are so many, uh, what do you call this, uh, results that we obtain and we publish in various journals. Uh, and we come up with the different uh, types of local plants. If you see, if you can see here, we use Ficus deltoidea, which is known as Maschotec, Zicaria odorata, Esom, Ortosiphon aristatus, Mesai kucing, or Cat Whisperer, uh, Cat Whisperer. Diplasium esculentum, pucuk paku, strobilantes crispa, pecah kaca, krianacanthus newtons, pecah kaca. So those are uh, what we call the common herbs that we use in uh, Malaysia. It's not just only uh, herbs, 
but also uh, some of them are used uh, as ulam uh, uh, as ulam when we eat uh, the nasi or when we eat rice okay so I, I want I want to share with you some of the findings from this paper okay um, so one of them is uh, has been published in uh, machine Journal of medical science because we studied the effect of different plant organs of mastotec uh, in the synthesis of sebum particles so mastotec plant here uh, they have a leaf stem figs and also roots okay uh, because some of the plants is just only have a leaf and also stem and also root but this plant it has a fig also or a fruit and then um, actually the mastotec itself is a local herb that can be used to treat diabetes hypertension diarrhea and so on okay so this is actually the summary of the result from our experiment okay from the lcms analysis there are many uh, phytochemical compounds that we uh, determine uh, inside the uh, mastotech uh, plant extract. Okay, for the plant extract here, we use aqueous extract. Because uh, we use aqueous extract because we want to maintain the term sustainable or we want to maintain the green synthesis technique. We are not using any solvent for this. Okay, we use the aqueous extract. We just add with water and boil it. Um, so the but there are actually uh, there are still uh, many um, compounds phytochemical comp compounds in this uh, plant extract. Uh, so more than half of the phytochemical compounds belong to phenolic flavonoid and also uh, polyphenol groups. And this compound is known. Uh, we know that it is responsible for reducing silver ions to H and B because if you see the structure, so the structure here. Uh, most of the plant here, uh, in terms of organic chemistry uh, point of view, so they have the uh, aromatic compound and also they have a conjugation system that can allow um, what we call this the reducing uh, agent, uh, re reducing ability of this plant extract. Okay, um, and then uh, we can see that all of the uh, plant extract from different organs here uh, can produce uh, silver nanoparticle. And we have a FTR spectrum here to show that uh, there are some important phytochemical compounds in the silver nanoparticle and because it is used as the capping agent or as a stabilizing agent. Okay, uh, what we can conclude from here is that uh, different plant organs having different phytochemical compounds result in the different biosynthesis of silver nanoparticle. Okay. Okay, we have another uh, paper uh, that have been, have been published in Particology. Uh, it's about the biogenic synthesis of silver nanoparticle using Persicaria odorata or Kesum leaf. And we know that the Kesum leaf, it has a very high antioxidant and also reducing ability. And then we uh, proceed with the antibacterial uh, activity, cytocompatibility and in vitro wound healing activity. Uh, so kesum or we call it as daun laksa uh, we, uh, we put it in the um, laksa uh, it's a local herb, popular herbs belong to the uh, this family okay often incorporated in cooking amongst asian uh. okay so the results from uh, this experiment okay uh, if you want to uh, synthesize silver in a particle there are a few characterization uh, technique that we need to do because we need to make sure that the silver nanoparticle that we produce is in the form of nano size and also uh, it is uh, it is silver silver nanoparticle because maybe there are some of these silver ions that are not uh, what we call this uh, reduced to silver nanoparticle so we need to make sure that more more than half of the silver ion uh, will be converted to the silver uh, zero or silver nanoparticle. Um, if not, the sample contain a lot of silver ions, but we, we want uh, silver nanoparticle. So we need to perform some of the characterization, um, characterization techniques. Uh, characterization. We need to characterize it. First is by looking at the uh, color development here. So when there is a formation of silver nanoparticle, the color will change from this uh, clear to the dark brown color. Okay, and then we we use UVV spectrophotometer to determine the uh, we call it as uh, 
surface plasmon resonance of the silver particle and the peak will appear at around 440 nanometer as compared to the plant extract and also as compared to the silver, silver nitrate so they are not peak at this uh, uh, area and also if there are spectra here okay shows that there are some phytochemical compound in the uh, sample okay and then SRD, SRD also is very important because this silicon particle is in the form of crystal. And then uh, one of the most important uh, characterization technique that we need to perform is using transmission electron microscopy because we can see the nano size, the particle, the particle size uh, of the sample. So you can see here the size is around uh, 8 to 12 nanometer, majority of them. Lah. Uh, or the mid diameter is around 11 nanometer. Okay. Um, so from all of this characterization technique, we, uh, we come up with this uh, uh, what theoretical uh, silver particle formation okay, from the Pesicaria odorata. So the diameter is around 11 nanoparticle and there are some uh, phytochemical compounds uh, uh, that, that actually uh, acting as uh, a capping and also stabilizing agent okay and then uh, we perform this antibacterial agent anti antibacterial activity so this uh, biogenic synthesis of silver particle uh, it has a bactericidal activity against gram positive bacteria and this silver particle was shown to be non-toxic to uh, this cell okay and then this silver particle facilitate wound healing by enhancing cell migration in vitro Okay, there is another one. Um, this is a little bit different because uh, we synthesize the silver nanoparticle and we put it on the uh, inorganic material. Uh, so in this case, we use zeolite. So zeolite is aluminum silicate. And it is in a material that uh, we can use to immobilize the silver nanoparticle so that uh, the silver nanoparticle can be placed onto the uh, what call this, a carrier system. Uh, it is similar uh, concept is a drug delivery system, but the, the delivery system is the zeolite and the drug is silver nanoparticle. So in here, uh, if you can see the uh, TM image of this uh, material, we found out that silver nanoparticle here incorporated into the zeolite uh, framework. So the silver nanoparticle is very small and the zeolite framework is in the micron size so uh, there are uh, nanoparticles here uh, that are placed uh, uh, inside the pore of the zeolite and then it will be released slowly uh, for, for uh, as, what do you call this, uh, to act as antibacterial agent. So we highlight here the incorporation of silver nanoparticles into synthesized zeolite A framework, uh, orthosiphon aristatus. So for this study, we use orthosiphon aristatus or misai kucing. Uh, we use it as a reducing agent for simple ion. And the yield of biogreen HNP cooperative oxalate like A, we, we use it, uh, what do you call this? Uh, we call it as in situ synthesis method. Uh, it has a significant antibacterial activity and there are no cytotoxicity and no hindrance in fibroblast in healing. Okay. So as a summary for this um, presentation, my presentation today is that the phytochemical compounds exist in the plant herbs and uh, are smart molecules that can be used as reducing and capping agent for metal nanoparticles. And for example, that we have shown here, silver nanoparticle, or there are one of one paper uh, explained about the uh, gold nanoparticle. Okay, uh, and then the this silver nanoparticle is in the form of spherical with size less than 100 nanometer. Okay, it's around 10 to 30 nanometer. And then we use aqueous extract uh, uh, because we want to maintain the green uh, approach. Uh, and this plant extract has high phenolic and phenolic compounds uh, because it's related to the high antioxidant activity and reducing activity. So that it can be used to synthesis silver nanoparticle at a shorter time, but with high uh, yield percentage. And the antibacterial battery mechanism actually is very complex, okay? Because it is combination of silver, silver nanoparticle, uh, and also the organic compounds that 
uh, derived from the active phytochemical compounds. So until now, uh, we cannot uh, come up with exact uh, antibacterial mechanism uh, of this uh, biosynthesis in Bonomatical because different uh, plant that we use, it will give a different active phytochemical compound and different mechanism. Uh, in fact, the silver nanoparticle, the antibacterial mechanism of silver nanoparticle is still, uh, what do you call this, is still uh, debating because uh, some say that uh, it's come from the silver plus. Some say that it will uh, react with the membrane. Some say that uh, it will uh, produce the ROS, radical oxygen scavenging, something like that. So actually there are many things that we need to do for this biosynthesis silicon particle in terms of the antibacterial mechanism or antimicrobial mechanism. So for the ongoing and future works, uh, this is what I said. Uh, this is ongoing work, okay? We are trying to uh, study, come up with the, to deduce the mechanism of antimicrobial, anti-cancer, and also the fungal of the silicon particle using in silico approach. And it's not just only this mechanism. So we, we also, we are, we are now using an silico approach to uh, understand how this silver nanoparticle uh, can be uh, synthesized using this plant extract. And other bioresource that we can use, uh, such as microalgae, marine bacteria, honey enzyme, and many others uh, bioresource. Lah. And other publication, uh, other application for this silver nanoparticle is antibiofolic agent. We can embed it in fabric, additive in paint, and other aspects of study involve large scale production, comparison with other techniques, using plant tissue culture, extraction technique, and also immobilization on other materials. So uh, I think that's the end uh, of my presentation. But before that, before that, I would like to thank all of the collaborators uh, and also the my students uh, and my colleagues. Uh, and also all of the uh, uh, funder, uh, uh, we have like seven grants that we perform starting from uh, 2018 and 2018 and until now, uh, we still uh, exploring many uh, bioresource uh, compound that can be used to synthesis, especially silver nanoparticle and also other metal nanoparticle. So uh, with that, uh, thank you very much. Uh, Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. So thank you very much for excellent talk, Dr. Niza. And we would like to back to you uh, on the discussion session. So uh, now we are going to continue with the third speaker. So here is the Professor Montharab Yamabai from the Thailand. Hello. Oh, hello. Good morning. Good morning. <laughs> so thank you for joining us and also encouraging your students to join our meeting. Thank you. So while uh, Professor Mosharab is getting ready for the speaking, so I would like to deliver some short curriculum video of her. So please committee help me to show. Okay, so uh, the third speaker is Professor Mosharab Yamabai, and currently she is belong to the School of Biotechnology Institute of Agricultural Technology in Suranari University of Technology, Thailand. And then um, he got uh, she got a PhD from the University of North Carolina, USA, in the field of biology before doing her postdoc in University of Texas. Southwestern Medical Center in USA. And also, uh, she already published 80 uh, scientific articles available in Google Scholar. And next, please. And also, uh, she already got a lot of professional experience as shown in this slide. And next. Next, please. And also, uh, she already got a lot of uh, distinguished honor and award, including the 2019 Thailand Research Fund Senior Research School. And until now, uh, she already uh, experienced in many kind of academic position in uh, Thailand. Okay, I think that is all for the short curriculum video of uh, Professor Monsarov. And uh, in this morning, she will 
give a talk with the title of Discovery of Specific Recombinant Antibody for Smart Theranostic. For Professor Montarov, time is yours. Okay, all right. Uh, you see my slide? Okay. Yes, we can see. Great. All right. Uh, first of all, thank you. Uh, uh, the, the, Mia, is that you? <laughs> uh, 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 and also the committee for your invitation. And actually, I'm sorry, uh, sorry, Professor, you can use slideshow so we can see. Yeah, right. Okay, I will. But um, just a thank, right. Um, so, in addition to thank you to the, the committee for your invitation, I'd like to extend my gratitude to, I think, Professor Vincent Lee and Professor Takeshi Omasa from uh, AFOB, I think they nominated me to be the one of the uh, keynote speaker of this meeting and I'm excited to join uh, my, my first time uh, joining this meeting. All right, so, um, so the, the, the topic of this, I was thinking, you know, it is a smart uh, conference. So what could be the a top topic of my talk? And I come up with this uh, t title of the discovery of a specific recombinant antibody for smart teranostics. Okay, try to try to say something smart, right? And I think I'm glad that I'm talking after uh, Dr. Nick, may I call you? Because he was talking about nanoparticle and you'll see that my talk will be related to his uh, talk as well. So you will see that uh, I'm from, uh, I, I, I understand that uh, you are collaborating before with uh, Professor Marina and James, which is also my uh, working at SUT. So you probably know SUT pretty well by now. All right, so the word Terranostic um, is, you know, for some, some, some people already know, but some may think this is quite a new uh, name. It is a combination of two words, um, therapeutics and diagnostic. So two things at the same time, all right? Right now, these uh, terrasnostics is mainly for the radioactive uh, um, nuclear treatment uh, for personalized cancer treatment. So when uh, uh, the doctor, the, the link uh, radioactive to the molecule that target cancer cells. So this is for pers personalized cancer. Uh, and because it's radioactive, one can see and use it to treat cancer. It can be in one uh, component. So this is like example that there are two components. You can see that the, the idea is that it direct to the target, in this case, cancer cell surface, and it's linked to the radioactive. So one radioactive could be for uh, observing or diagnostic, and the other radioactive is for therapeutic or killing the, uh, the cancer cells. However, uh, even though it started with is a nuclear medicine, but it's, uh, the, it's moving on. This is, I got this from, 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 from Google search that the uh, this is nicely uh, defined by, uh, in this, uh, in this journal, that is a be the beauty of terrasnostic is a paradigm. Okay? Is it because of ability to identify the disease and then try to targeting it, and for uh, it can be used for high uptake of the agnostic version of therapeutic agents. And when we are talking about uh, uptake of the agnostic or therapeutic agent that would involve using nanoparticles. And I'm glad that uh, Professor Nick was talking about nanoparticle before my talk. So I won't have to go into detail of this. And ex especially it's not my expertise anyhow, because I was mainly my talk today would talking about how to target these nanoparticles to the, to the, to the target of disease. All right, but mainly I can touch a little bit that there are two types of nanoparticles. It's a liposome base and also is a polymer base, right? So um, for it depends on the drug that we would like to target. If the drug is um, um, hydrophilic like water, we, we like to use this liposome so that it will be in the in the side the, the, the water part of, of the, the molecules it, or it can be embedded in the, in the membrane structure as well. Uh, as for the um, as for let me move this a little bit. As for another part, another type of a uh, nanoparticle like polymeric, this is more like for the hydrophobic uh, part of the drug. You can do this way. 
And you know, Professor Nick was talking about uh, sewer nanoparticle. I, I'm not sure how that to fit into this, but anyway, so this is a type of the nanoparticle that we use for the uh, load the drop to the target. So you can see that one important feature of this nanoparticle for terrestrial is the targeting molecules, okay? And we can load either the therapeutic agents or diagnostic agent into this uh, nanoparticle. So my research has been focusing on the identify the, the target molecule for this nanoparticle. And I focus mainly on two types of target molecules, uh, short peptides and an antibody fragment SCFV. And I've been using a uh, phage display technology to identify these molecules. And today my talk will be focusing mainly on the antibody fragment because I found that it has a potential to actually use to direct the target of these uh, nanoparticle to the target of the disease, all right? So, um, okay, phase display. Let, let me talk about phase display technology a, a bit because I said I use this technique to identify the targeting molecules of this nanoparticle. The technology has just, uh, I've been working with this for 20 years, but just in 2018, this technique uh, was awarded a Nobel Prize. I mean, there are three scientists uh, the whole uh, uh, is about a molecular evolution, but the two scientists who involved with the phase display technology are George Smith and uh, Greg Winter. So Greg Winter. Okay. So this technique involved in the beginning uh, phage. Phage is the back of virus that infect bacteria, and it's a filamentous phage. It's pretty long, like a filament, and it's. Uh, have two important protein P3 and P8, and this is an electron micrograph of this uh, phage. If you look at the cartoon, it's very simple. It's a single-stranded phage with contains only 11 genes, so one can easily engineer. It's, it's been used in molecular biology for some time to make the single-stranded DNA before we have this uh, fancy technology. And it is George Smith, who during the sabbatical leave decided to uh, try to engineer this phase so that it can display the protein on the surface. All right, so, and that has become known. And after, after his uh, idea, it's been used all over the world to display protein, which I explain later. But later on, it's not only filamented phage that can be used to display peptide protein. A lambda phage can also be used as well. Right, but mainly in my laboratory, we use a, a original phage, M30, right? Uh, let me explain a little bit of phage life cycle, the, the filamentous phage. It is different from lambda phage. This is a lysogenic phage, meaning it will not break down the bacterial cell, but it only slow down the growth of the bacteria. It's a filamentous phage. It will uh, bind to the bacteria that have F plus, okay, it's F plus bacteria. Didn't grow into, but they inject the DNA, which is a single stranded, and use the enzyme inside the cell to make a double stranded DNA. So this look um, like the normal uh, plasmid in the bacterial cells. Okay, and it produces to produce all the protein, 11 protein required to make the phage. And at one point, it will go to this, uh, uh, go back into the positive strain and then come out of the bacteria, uh, the phage assemble and come out of the bacteria. And this way, it will not break the cells. All right, and and because of that, if you grow this phage on the lawn of bacteria, you will see a turbid plaque of bacteria that grows slower, not a clear plaque. And if you do engineering, because it's easy to do engineering, because it's look like a, uh, just a vector DNA, we can engineer and put some kind of marker like uh, beta gal. In this case, if you add substrate, it will turn blue. So this plaque is a plaque of phage and turn blue because it's our engineer phage. So sounds maybe, uh, com I don't know, maybe for you, some of you are some complicated, but it is just a basic molecular biology, basic microbiology uh, techniques that can easily be done. You know, I studied in the US when I came back to Thailand 20 years ago, it is possible to establish phase display in, the, in Thailand because it doesn't require much of the instrument and just basic good uh, microbiology techniques. So be, because of that, um, we, I have been doing this in, in the past 20 years. So, okay, one thing about this, as I mentioned, this double-stranded DNA. So we, this is a vector for engineering. And because we sometimes, because it comes from phage, we can't give call it Instead of plasmid, you can have phage mid, right? So as I said, 11 genes, one can do the engineering. So if you want to express a small 
amount of a, a short peptide, then you can just engineer into this phase. But is the if the, the peptide is a bit larger to express, so we have to use helper phase. I won't, I won't go into detail of this, but anyway, this technique has been used all over the world, as I said, and in 2018 and to was with the Nobel Prize and the paper came out by George Smith himself in 2019 that he, this is in his Nobel lecture, he used this picture and he just, this is from his uh, original work and you can see the engineering the gene of P3 so that it fills with the P3 gene. So then now you can display the protein on the code of the phage. Right, and then in his original work, he just display a short fragment of the eco R1. So you can see here, and then if they have antibody that bind, he proved that. And basically, this is a technique for simple evolution in a petri dish, and that's why I got the prize. And I evolution in this. Let me explain. So first of all, when you do phage display, you have to make a library. A library of phage that display uh, different peptide, different antibodies. So this is a library of phage. So, and when I said library is a um, million, 10 million so different phage, it's different, display different peptide protein. And then as I said, simple evolution or affinity selection is a key technique of this, uh, uh, of this uh, phage display technology. So you have a library of the phage that display different antibody or protein fragment, you immobilize, you incubate this library of phage to the target of interest. Okay, that the target has to be immobilized on certain uh, solid uh, phase. All right, and after that, we wash off and bow phage. All right, and then after that, uh, we collect this uh, population of phage. I, I draw one phage, but actually, this is a, a population of phage is bind and amplify overnight. And subject these three to four rounds of uh, uh, selection. And at the end, we collect the phase just fine. So, because of this process, that's why this is called evolution, because you evolve to get the population of the phase that can bind to the target. That's why it is as a molecular evolution techniques. And sometimes we like to call it a bio panning techniques because it's like panning. Uh, for goal in this case, because we, we select for the, what we want. And this is more powerful than screening. Plus screening, you have to do one by one, but with the selection, you can do uh, uh, faster, right? Just like by panning. Of course, this is 20 years ago. This their technology advanced. They have the AI, have a, a, a next-gen sequencing. Phase display can be really uh, been, you know, advanced now, but I won't, I won't go into detail today. All right, now just in general, what can be displayed on the phage code? It can be a short peptide, as I mentioned, and that peptide can be a linear peptide or cyclic peptide. To make it cyclic, very simple, just cis two cysteine molecule from disulfide bond. Oh, this is what is exciting is to display antibody, but of course the whole antibody is way too big to display on the phage, phage cannot handle. So what people, Display on the phase is just a short fragment of antibody, heavy chain and light chain, and join to get the biolinker. So about this nanometer size is possible to display. Even so, you need a help of phase to help with this in, in the, the real technique. And also some other people at display um, cDNA or enzyme, but I would think that the most common and successful thing to, to, to display is a peptide and antibody. And this is exactly what I've been working in the laboratory. So as I mentioned before, we're looking for the binding or affinity of the phage to display uh, whatever to the target. So you, in order to confirm the classic technique in phage display is phage ELISA, where you have a target of interest immobilized on ELISA plate, you add phage that display, and if the phage display the peptide or antibody that binds to the target, it binds. Wash away, add secondary antibody, just like ELISA, add substrate, and the, it become green. And that's to show that there is a real binding. And if you do ELISA, you read the, the OD uh, signal from the bindings. This is a typical by opening result. The first time you will get uh, a few phage that can bind the target. After enrichment, after evolution, you'll get more phage that can bind to the target. So this is an example of successful application of a phage display. All right. 
So as I mentioned, uh, I will focus on the display of antibody fragment. So as I mentioned before, antibody is way too big to display on the phage. So we have to use a fragment of antibody. And in this case, my lab laboratory is focused on a single chain variable fragment of antibody. And it just happened to be the techniques that uh, uh, Sir Greg Winter used to, uh, to, to generate antibodies. And that has become the blockbuster drug. Okay, what, what Greg Winter did is that he um, convert mouse version of the antibody against TNF alpha into the human version of uh, antibody using phage display. He, the, the technique is called guided selection. So he used this technique. And that's why I think that the, 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 the whole thing get a no prize because it's so powerful, you know? And then once convert this SCM into immunoglobulin, the Humira uh, drug has become the best selling drug with a trillions, billions dollar uh, on sale. Okay, so, so that's why um, the, the technique has become very, very powerful. And this is to prove the power of the, the techniques. But for the, for the display of antibody, I think we have to thank you to the another Nobel Prize winner, uh, Susumu to Tonikawa. He is a, a, a scientist who discovered antibody gene rearrangement. So one is very complex, happened in B cell. And once scientists understand this, they can decide uh, primers, how to amplify the gene, how to get only the fragment of the antibody that can bind to the target. Uh, of antigen of interest and do the engineering, all right? So um, about uh, 15 something years ago, I started my laboratory. My first PhD student, we decided to, to build a, a library uh, of a human antibody, okay? And this is a, a, a compact library of five times 10 to the eighth or 100 million different clones. This is number is not that big when compared to the big, uh, uh, the, library from a big pharma company, but it is the same number of circulating B cell in the body, I mean, 10 to the eighth. So I think it's a good size of the library. And so this is Pochamat, my first PhD student. And since then she published this and has been become a very useful uh, resource to build antibody to a number of target, a wide variety of target, which I'll give you some example in my talk today. All right, so to briefly about the construction of the library. So we get it from pool of 140 individuals. This is actually, look in, in the literature, is the most, the highest number of a uh, number of people reported. And at least they published 140 people and we got it from Red Cross blood donation. We collect and these are healthy volunteer from Northeastern Thailand. So these are people to expose to a wide variety of antigen, but they're healthy and strong. So we cut their blood and then we do the uh, classic mm, phages play library. We design the primers, okay? And then we build a library. And of course, um, this, uh, I, this is one of the library that I'm, happy to join, to share with you, or collaborate with you in using it for anything, okay? Uh, I've been giving this to uh, colleagues, for example, in, in even in Iran uh, and, and, and many places in, 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 in Europe as well. Um, the, the antibody, not, this is not my own library, but uh, the antibody generated from phage play has been become drug and use that this is a list of the antibody. And this is two years ago. So it is actually have a hope that the antibody from fish display can be actually rich to the clinical level. And I, I would like to mention a little bit that there are many kinds of library. This is the library YAMO one that I made in my laboratory, but it can be an immune library. It can be a synthetic library. And these days a number are in synthetic. And I think also this is a very powerful semi-synthetic where you use a framework of human and use some, some DNA synthesis. So anyway, so what I have now is just naive and also the Im for the immune. I have a Vietnamese student who, who make an immune li library from rabbit. So we basically we follow a uh, human method, but from rabbit, we can immunize, we can inject whatever antigen we want, and we make a focused library on only for that antigen. It is possible to do, but the antibody is a rabbit and the target for this, his research, I'm from Institute of Agriculture, so the, the target is actually a biofertilizer, it's a bacteria, soil bacteria. Anyway, so we'll show that it is possible, but then 
this is good because the antibody binds pretty strong, but the, the drawback is that um, it, it's rabbit and it's also focused on only on the target that we inject into the rabbit, All right? So now let me switch back to the human library. So, um, you know, people focus a lot on, on cancer, but when I decided to do this, maybe we shift into the, uh, something else. We, so I was thinking about the bacteria and Dr. Professor Nick was just talking about a uh, nanoparticle for antibacterial. So in, in my case, we were thinking about, you know, and we have the big problem of multi resistant bacteria. So we're thinking about using alternative method to, 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 to treat of this uh, bacterial infection. But first of all, let, uh, we have some data about imaging, just the imaging of the bacteria. So we use this same YAMO human uh, library to uh, isolate antibodies again uh, to pathogenic bacteria. And this is a work by Dr. Uh, Min is, uh, from, from Myanmar. So she's doing this in her, on her PhD and continue with the postdoc now. So what Tate did is that she did by biopanning against two type of bacteria as just the representative, all right? And then both gram positive and negative, we got the an SCFV fragment, which is linked with cyclistidine. And she showed that she can use this SCFV for ELISA, Western blood, uh, immunofluorescent and flow cytometry. And this is just an example that of that the, back, the, the antibody can use to detect bacteria both in planktonic and also in on bowel film. And I think this would be interesting. Okay, this is not tagged with nanoparticle yet, but with the idea that if we tag this antibody with nanoparticle, so we can direct the, the targeting only to kill the bad bacteria. We don't want to kill the whole bacteria in the body because we know very well now that good bacteria microbiome is very important for the body. So we don't want to get we, we, when thinking about target uh, killing of the bacteria as well, that's the, that, that's the hope in the future, All right? And also, as I said, I'm from Institute, Institute Agriculture, so we were wa working on the, another soil bacteria. This is just to show that another student from Myanmar, she used this pretty much the same technique that Tay Tay used with the pathogenic bacteria, and then she showed that the bacteria uh, her antibody binds to both free living and bacteria. Bacteria mean the bacteria that is go into the plants and form a nodule. That is for nitrogen fixing. All right, it has nothing to do with uh, terrasnotic. But I just want to show that this library can generate antibodies so widely against so many kinds of bacteria and even in a bacterial form. And also this is a special soil bacteria that can go into rice and stay in the root and the different organs rise, and we can still follow this bacteria. Now it's in the uh, planktonic, the free living form. And when it's formed nodule, when with competition, you can easily see that the uh, antibody can stain only the strand of the bacteria of interest, in, even though it's co inoculant in the nodule with another uh, bacteria in the field. So I hope that I could convince you that this uh, 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 antibody library from human is, can be very useful. One thing I like to point out here: this is not an immunized library; is a uh, it's a uh, it's a naive or non-immunized. So even though we can generate antibodies against a wide variety of target, you know, from mycotoxin, from virus and bacteria, but the affinity seems to be lower when compared to mouse monoclonal or polyclonal antibody. Fortunately, uh, there are scientists who have shown that it is impossible, it's, it's not, it's, it is possible to improve the binding affinity using different molecular biology techniques, for example, chain shuffling. This is a random. So what, what, what Dr. Kuntli was a PhD student, then she said she used a pool of um, antibody from the first round that combined together, makes a, 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 a second library and do the biopanning. And also it's possible to uh, shuffle the fragment with the whole library again and create a shuffle library and then do the biopanning again, select for the better clone. And Guntali did show that she was able to improve the binding affinity tenfold, okay? It depends, Some, somebody can have a hundredfold, but in this case it's tenfold, but actually it, it, is get, it is better. And also proof of principle that the good thing about this engineering antibody is that you can improve the F binding affinity and also in the future, I plan to combine with a 3D modeling or structural biology to really improve the antibody affinity or even on other properties. 
All right. One thing I mentioned earlier that uh, the antibody from the fridge is a fragment of antibody, but because we know we have the, the this is a power of uh, the phage displays that we have a gene that encode the protein that we display. So we could get the gene and start to do engineering. And this is to show that from SCLV, we can convert into alkali phosphatase fusion, fills to GLP, chain into immunoglobulin, or just some another and fills with the fragment uh, constant domain of the antibody. You can do a, num a number of things. But what, what happened is that Guntali show they recently published that the, um, the properties of antibody change once you convert from uh, this molecule into a different format. And she showed this in this case, it's just IC50 different. The things that you cannot predict what will be, just have to do experiment because it's, it's one by one. Oh, hopefully in the future, somebody can predict, but as of now, we don't really know how, once it convert to different uh, format, uh, it will change. That means if we want to convert this and fuse with nanoparticle for terrestrial diagnostic, we have to really do experiment to confirm the behavior of the SCFV. So I've been talking about other things, but let me give my last example about uh, uh, the, the application of our library for cancer research. And this is the work that is done by Chitima, that's just <clears throat> recently graduate PhD student. We, coll we collaborate with uh, uh, for UCL from in, in, in England. So what she did is, is totally different from other people. Other people tend to start with a PO antigen of Talk, uh, cancer, uh, cancer biomarker. We think this is a, a target for for cancer. But what Titima did is that she just used whole cell, uh, cancer cell, without knowing the target. So it's pretty challenging. So it takes her some time to identify the phage just can bind to this cancer cell. But we still don't know the target. But I th we think that is it could be something new and interesting. All right. So what Titima did, she just did whole cell. Uh, by opening of the cancer cells and she can show the, the staining of the uh, an antibody to the cell surface. And she, we took some sample, of, this is from cell line, all right, uh, uh, acute leukemia cell lines, and we took sample from pa patient. And also we, we show that uh, it binds, it's entity binds to certain population of patient cancer cell. So this, and that makes sense because it's similar to the kind of cell line that she used for biopanning. So we hope that this might be useful in the future. And when she convert to this and SCLV to uh, immunoglobulin, she showed that it could help to kill the cell specifically when compared to an uncontrolled antibody. So they have some hope that this antibody can be used for terrestrial or diagnostic, terrestrial in the future. All right, let, let me give you the final, the last example of uh, Therapeutic, teratnostic, uh, sort of, uh, not not fully teratnostic because uh, this is but it is a called CAR T cell therapy. Uh, some of you may not familiar with CAR T cells. So basically, T cell is a lymphocyte in our body that can kill cancer. And this this T cell, this is cancer cell, a tumor cell. So the T cell can before they kill, it has to bind to the cancer, recognize. And after that, you will secrete uh, many things basic to kill the tumor cells. So this is the idea of a CAR T cell. So what um, scientists actually is in, the, in clinical trial is, is used already in, in, in some patients successfully. So what they did is they extract T cell from patient, do the engineering because the T cell in T cell has, this T cell is to cannot recognize uh, cancer very well. So we engineer T cells so that it can have molecules that can bind to the cancer very well. So they, we did engineering outside and put back into the patient and then let the, these kill cancer cells, all right? So basically, so this is the engineer, it's called CAR-T, right? So can come out, kill the cancer. And cancer, once the cancer is killed, it will generate some uh, molecules to activate a normal and another T cell in the body as well. And it's been used successfully for some research already, but some fail, some clinical trials, some, some fail. Because uh, sometimes, you know, the engineering of these, uh, as I mentioned, you have to target the T cell to the cancer and the targeting mo moiety is the SCFV uh, antibody that binds to the molecules on the cancer cells. And there's different generation of uh, CAR T cell depend on this core stimulate 
co-stimulatory molecules that make it faster or more efficient. However, when the CAR T, the T cell is so effective, there's a big problem as well, which is cause immunogenicity to the patient. So some not successful, even though the uh, cancer cell is killed, but the, the patient is sick from the cytokine storm as well. All right, so um, recently we've been collaborating with our colleagues from Mahidon University, Professor Pei Tai from Sirilat Hospital. He, first of all, he compared, we tried to develop a next generation of CAR T so that will be more effective and without too much of the cytotoxicity. So he showed, first of all, he used mouse uh, antibody and mouse CFB and showed that, of course, CAR 2, 3, 4, and you see the CAR 4, fourth generation with lots of co-stimulatory molecules can kill cancer very well. All right, so, but then, so we want to compare, this is mouse uh, antibody, we HVL, this is a control, and this is our SCFV that used, he can he generate from our uh, YAML li phase display library. So we made it carved to so fourth generation, everything looks good. Now let, let's look at the killing activity. We show that both human and mouse, which is by very strong, but you cannot use the mouse version to treat cancer patient because of the amino reactivity. So the killing activity of human and mouse are pretty much the same. But what is interesting is that the human version, the, the red one, did not stimulate the cytokine. So the that means if we put into the patient, we'll have less uh, cytotoxicity to the patient. So we are quite excited about this result and hopefully we could go into the clinical trial one day. All right, so I think I'm on time. So I would like to conclude my work is that the SCFV from our library uh, could be used as an affinity reagent for incorporation into uh, my race of diagnostic platform. I hopefully maybe next year I can report to you some of, some of this story. But anyway, after subject of to appropriate antibody engineering, because a lot of engineering have to be done in order to make it work. So with this, I like to thank you all the funding agency from, from Thailand and also from Europe to help establish uh, this work. And also I have collaborators from, from Europe and also this is a collaborator from Thailand. Uh, especially in the UCL with the cancer. And this Peter Christensen has given us a help of phage uh, and all the antibody expression. Brian K is my teacher from the US who teach me phage display and all these are collaborators in Thailand. So with this, I'd like to thank you. Okay, thank you so much for uh, Professor Mozart for excellent talk. It's so inspiring. You share a new technique in biotechnology and we can uh, use it in a many kind of field. So now it's coming to the discussion session. Therefore, I would like to invite all uh, participants and attendants to give a question through the chat room in the Zoom or you can raise your hand so we can give you an access. So you can um, ask directly your question for our keynote speakers. So, uh, but previously, uh, I would like to ask for Professor Monsarov, do you still have a time before your lecture? Sure, sure. My lecture is at 10. <laughs> yes. Ah, I see, I see. Okay. So, uh, I would like to know if the committee can help me to show the questions or should I directly questions to them? Directly. Uh, okay, so I guess the first one, we have uh, some questions already uh, waiting in the chat room. The first one is from uh, Dr. Octavia, I guess. Yes, this one. So good morning, uh, Dr. Nizam. Thank you for the incredible presentation. Since we call them as nanoparticle, do we also have to evaluate their characteristic as nanoparticle, such as zeta potential? Uh, entrapment, efficiency, etc. Do they behave similar to the nanoparticle produced by top up or bottom up method? So, Dr. Anizam, please. Okay. Right. Thanks, uh, moderator. So, um, um, the question is about the uh, nanoparticles, right? So, actually, we when we synthesize silver nanoparticle or any other nanoparticles, 
the main aim is to come out uh, to produce uh, nanoparticles and silver nanoparticles we, we, we want to make sure that it's a silver nanoparticle so we need to perform all of the characterization uh, techniques okay uh, similar to the uh, nanoparticles that we produce okay uh, and it's and also it depend on the nanoparticles now but like specifically for the silver nanoparticle okay we need to have a, a uv visible uh, infrared spectroscopy uh, tm transmission electron microscopy uh, and scanning electron microscopy and other uh, what they call this nanoparticles now. and also it depend on the it depend on the application of the nanoparticles if you want to use it uh, for uh, what do you call it, the physical uh, for the for the degradation, okay. So you need to have additional uh, character characterization techniques. Okay. If you want to study the what do you call it, the the uh, mechanism between uh, the interaction between the nanoparticle and so phytochemical compounds, so you need you can use SPS, X-ray photo electron scattering. So uh, it depend on the uh, it depend on the what it application okay and also the metal itself okay different metal will give a different character, character, characterization techniques but the typical one is transmission electron microscopy so that we can see the particle of the uh, metal that is in the form of nano size and then. Uh, Actually, it will behave similar to the nanoparticle because the main aim is to produce nanoparticle that specific nanoparticle. So whether it's a top, top up or bottom up, so it's different. However, it's different when we use different uh, reducing agent. Okay, for example, if we use if we use sodium monohydrate, uh, the the chemical reducing agent. Uh, so we need to discard this. We need to remove this uh, reducing agent, and we need to replace with other um, organic compound. For example, that's a fat uh, But for the uh, uh, when we use plant extract, uh, there are phytochemical compounds inside the plant extract that uh, actually exist together in the silver particle. So those uh, we call it as capping agent or stabilizing agent. So those stabilizing agent will give different. Uh, the different capping agent will give a different properties, uh, different uh, characteristic. Okay, but the particle is, uh, is the same. Lah. So that's my answer for the question. Okay, thank you, uh, Dr. Nizam, for answering the questions. Uh, before moving on to the next question, I would like to invite uh, there is uh, there are some. Actually, the sound is not, uh, is not clear. Uh, sorry, okay. So could you hear my voice clearly? No? Ah, okay, right. Yes. Okay, it's better. Yeah. Uh, before moving on to the next question, I would like to invite if there is any question from the offline attendance. There is no question, but uh, I would like to ask one question for Professor Montaro. So I really uh, interested in the car T cells technology. It's such kind of powerful tools to treat the cancer. You already present. Uh, the effect, the strong effect, and also the wonderful effect of the new generation CAR T cells in compared to the canonical, the previous one. Mm -hmm. But uh, we don't know yet what's the different. I mean, what did you change to these cells so so that you call it new technology of of CAR T cells? Right, so um, it is the core stimul sim stimulator molecules inside the cell. So the, once the, the once the CAR T once the CAR T cell have that has antibody display by to the by to the target, it stimulates stronger uh, signal inside the cell because they engineer the molecules inside the cell. So the the cell the T cell is like stronger is like it, it big, bigger bullets uh, uh, bombs to bombs the cancer cell because of this uh, engineering and of course it can bomb or kill the cancer better but it's also create a uh, uh, problem to the body as well because it start to add, add on other cells as well so what what we did is that 
of course, if you use the anti the target to the cancer, if it's a, a mouse molecule, mouse can stimulate uh, Im immune reactions as well. So what we did with our colleagues, we just human, the human fra fragment um, uh, can won't create an immune reaction as much as mouse. And also, um, thanks for asking. Uh, we found that it's quite interesting that human antibody from our YAMO library doesn't buy that strong. The affinity is lower. And because of that, it induced less uh, immune reaction. So we think that it is the affinity that from human antibody that is sometimes too strong is not good in this case. Yeah, thank you for your question. In fact, you know, I have a, I have a class. Uh, sorry, you want to continue? No, no, I just want to say thanks. Right. So because I'm in for uh, Dr. Nick, right? On uh, you, you know how you can, you were talking about nanoparticle, right? And uh, I have to question: Is that is silver okay? Because you know, some people think silver is also not safe. The other thing that you see any possibility of target your silver nanoparticle with uh, antibody fragments? Okay, um, well, actually, uh, silver is not safe when we use it at a, a high concentration or high amount. That's why one of my projects is we, we want to immobilize. We would immobilize it on the zeolite so that we can reduce the use of silver. And then uh, actually in other research, uh, we, we attach it together uh, with the other antibiotic agent. So the amount of silver is very low. Uh, we are not used directly the silver. Okay. So for that uh, question, um, what what is that the talking about the antibody? What? Right. So it's sort of like a biofilm, these kind of things. You know, I have antibody that target only specific uh, bacteria. Can we somehow make that uh, not your, your nanoparticle kills only the bad bacteria, not good bacteria, for example. Okay, uh, so that's one one thing about the silver. Uh, it can be, uh, it's not specific uh, target. So it's a for the wide spectrum of the uh, bacteria. And what we have done, it can kill us, uh, uh, what do you call the broad spectrum of bacteria, uh, married bacteria, uh, what do you call this, the gram positive, gram negative, all of them. Yep, so I think, uh, for that, uh, for me, uh, for, based on my experience, it's not suitable to, to use that. Yeah, it's not suitable to use that. Um, uh, however, uh, if there is a technology where we can functionalize the silver nanoparticle using some uh, functional group uh, that is similar to the bacteria, so maybe we can we can we can perform that. Uh, yeah. But for the silver nanoparticle itself, I think. Uh, it's not suitable to, to kill the to, to target the, the specific bacteria. Yep. Okay, thank you, Prof. Montarov, and also uh, Professor Nick for the insightful discussion. So uh, I guess I can continue for the next question from the online audience. Uh, this is from uh, Ms. Yeni. This question is addressed to Professor Nick. So I have one question to you. You say that nanoparticle from biological resort, for example, the plant, microalgae and other things, which one is more effective to having a good product of nanoparticle in correlation with your current reset? Thank you. Okay, um, so we have done a few bio resource, uh, plants, microalgae, honey, and using uh, honey, uh, and also bacteria. Actually, uh, all of them, they have uh, their own pro and con, uh, which means they have uh, their own benefit and their own uh, drawbacks. Okay, uh, for example, uh, for the bacteria. So for the bacteria, we need to grow them and we need to have a certain, what is a specific um, instrument and like, for example, incubator and we need to make sure that the, uh, the, the area is clean from the contamination to grow them because we want to uh, make sure that uh, uh, we can have a highly amount of bacteria. So th those are drawbacks of the bacteria. But uh, for the plant, for the for the plant, for the plant extract, actually is much uh, what they call this effective as compared to effective too in terms of the raw materials, the raw, the preparation of the raw materials to itself. Okay. Uh, 
So under plan, there is a specific plan that, that I gave you uh, during my presentation. So we come up with uh, five different plan. And then uh, the consume leave of the Sikaria or the Rata is the, is the, is the best uh, 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 bioreducing agent for the Sigma Manopatica because it has a high, the highest antioxidant and also reducing ABT. So uh, which one is more effective? I cannot say that because it depends on the raw material. But when we come up with the uh, plan, for now, the best is the consume leaf. Uh, the, the best one is a kesum leaf because kesum ni, sekaria odorata, is not under herbs. Uh, it is considered as, uh, what they call this, as ulam. So it's much, the, in terms of raw material, is much more cheaper than the herbs. Uh, herbs, for example, like maschotek. Okay, and also misai kucing, for example. So those are a little bit expensive as compared to the kesum. And also, uh, when we want to consider the, uh, what do you call this, the, the time that we can harvest this kesom and it's easy to grow. So those are the parameters that we need to uh, consider when we want to use different raw material, materials. Uh, for the microalgae, because uh, I have one friend here that uh, growing the microalgae in their lab. And, and also we know that uh, in our country, in Asia and also I think in Indonesia, so it's easy to grow uh, uh, microalgae. Uh, so uh, I think in terms of which one is uh, effective, uh, I think uh, it depends on the uh, application of the sigma particle and the uh, source of the raw materials. So many parameters uh, that we need to consider. So I think that's my uh, answer. Yep. Okay, thank you for the clear answer. And then uh, the next one is the question addressed to Professor Fatia from Ms. Ernanin. So before I deliver the question, I would like to ask to Professor Fatia because she already answered in the chat room. So would you like to deliver clearly? Okay. So the question is, uh, thank you for the interesting presentation for Prof. Well, maybe Fatia. I answer directly, directly okay. without you read okay. this question. Yeah, please. Okay. Uh, thank you for Ernanin and Professor Sasase for your question. Firstly, I would like to answer the Ernanin question. Uh, of course, uh, we have big research program for exploring biological compound of Indonesian purpose because uh, this is very, very interesting for me. Uh, as far as I know, the purple rice is uh, from Japan and also from Korea. Uh, South Korea, but uh, in Indonesia, I think this is the first purple rice. Uh, uh, this purple rice is from uh, a crossbreed farmer in East Java, uh, but uh, directly I answer also for Professor uh, Sasase. Uh, there are any instability uh, expression uh, of the purple rice in East Java, uh, but we would like to invite the uh, agriculture research team in Brawijaya University also to solve this problem in farmer for rice field uh, crossbreeding. Uh, anyway, uh, the question from Ernanin, I would like also to invite uh, uh, any person who would like to join us to PhD program in my research group, we would like to explore uh, biological compound uh, in purple rice. Uh, we, are, we would like to use animal models because I have a lot of uh, animal models uh, I made by myself. And also, I would like to use a specific cell line related with my metabolic dysfunction and other some disease model. So we open for students uh, for future uh, next program, study, study program in my labs, uh, in my center research in Simonaki and UP. Uh, so because we have uh, a lot of uh, 
property, a lot of the rice, uh, pigmented rice, uh, you can using uh, for your study uh, as proper. I think both of the question I have already answered. Thank you. Okay, thank you very much, uh, Professor Fatia. So I guess we have uh, another question for uh, Professor Nick. Uh, maybe I can directly uh, read the question from the chat room. So this question is from uh, Mr. Echo. And then he's asking, what is the most important thing or factor in the ability of the microorganism can synthesize the silver part nanoparticle since the strepsomyces uh, was reported can also uh, synthesize for the silver nanoparticle. So is it true if more smaller, the size of a nanoparticle is better and how the mechanism to synthesize the silver nanoparticle? I think there is, that is the question. Okay, all right. So the first question, um, what is the most important in the ability of the uh, microorganism? Okay, like right. What kind uh, of properties? Yes. Well, actually, uh, our focus is on the plant extract, not on the microorganism uh, or bacteria yet. Okay. So, uh, but what I do know is that the uh, uh, they 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 need to have a similar characteristic with the chemical reducing agent because the purpose of the uh, biological resources is to reduce the silver plus to silver zero. So the main thing is that it has the um, ability to reduce uh, to have a reducing ability. Um, like for example, in the in the, in the plant extract, there is a uh, one of the one of the active compound called escocetin. So cosetin it has the ability to reduce uh, compound okay from silver plus to silver zero. So similar to the other microorganism. So as long as this mechanism have the ability to reduce, so it can be used to uh, synthesize it. Uh, synthesize silver in a particle. Okay, and then the second question is it true if more smaller? Yes, uh, because the smaller the nanoparticle. Uh, the smaller the surface area, so that's very important. Uh, the nanoparticle, eh, because of the nano size, though, uh, some of the characteristic is uh, different from the micron size or from the bulk uh, uh, sample or from the uh, bulk uh, particle, bulk material. Uh, because uh, the smaller the, the the particle, the the higher the surface area. Once the surface area is higher. Uh, the particle will be more reactive actually. It will be more reactive uh, and it will, uh, the, the, the activities, for example, activated activities, antioxidant activities, efficacy activities, uh, they will be uh, increased because of the high surface area. Uh, but, uh, but actually it's not much. If you, if you compare it with micron size and also uh, nano size, and let's say for example, you have a 200 nanometer, and also 10 nanometer, so the 10 nanometer will give a more uh, effective antibacterial uh, activity as compared to 200 nanometer. And how the mechanism of the synthesis in molecule? Uh, uh, it's also the same. It's, it is it's the same because silver and aurum or gold is the metal. Okay, is the metal. The the metal the uh, most of the uh, characteristic of the metal, they are all same. Yeah, they are all same. But there is a difference in terms of the uh, size, uh, in terms of the uh, reducing ability, which one has the, um, what do you call this, is easy to reduce or easy to, and many things. Lah. Okay. Uh, and some of the uh, microorganism micro that we use to synthesis silicon particle can also be used to synthesis nanoparticle. However, uh, it depends on uh, various parameters. That's why one of the steps in, synthesis, in, in the synthesis of the uh, metal nanoparticle is the optimization, uh, what is it optimization stage, where we need to optimize many parameters before we can synthesize these uh, metal nanoparticles. 
the parameters include uh, solution pH, temperature, reaction time, uh, uh, the concentration, the ratio, uh, and other parameters. Uh, so my uh, what about this? My answer is that yes, it's the same, and can use the uh, can use the same microorganism to uh, synthesis silver uh, to synthesis gold and particle. Yep, that's my question. That's my answer. Okay, thank you very much for Professor Nick for giving you the answer. So I guess there is no more question from the chat room. So I guess this is the end session for the uh, keynote uh, speaker in the fourth ISMART 2022. Therefore, uh, I would like to give applause for our three keynote speaker in this morning. And also thank you very much for the all participants for the actively discussion and thank you for once again for insightful talk for all speakers this morning. And then uh, I would like to pass this session for the master ceremony, please. Okay, thank you very much for the moderator. And uh, thank you very much for the Excellencies uh, keynote speakers for elaborating the ideas comprehensively. And uh, for the next, um, I would like to request to Professor Fatia, Associate Professor Nick Ahmad Nizam Nick Malek, and Professor Montarab Yamabai. Uh, we would like to ask you to stay on the stage because we would like to present uh, the ceremonial certificate for sharing your expertise in the session. And for Professor Fatia, please uh, get on the stage. And to present the ceremonial gift, kindly invi be invited to uh, ISMAR Chairman, Dr. Nia Kurnianisi, and the moderator, Dr. Regina Putri Virgirinia. Okay, thank you to uh, Professor Fatia, and I will return it to the Dr. Regina Putri Virgirinia to uh, give the ceremonial certificate for online um, keynote speakers. Okay, here we are delivering the online uh, certificate for the Professor Nick. So I would like to ask the committee to help me to show the certificate on the screen. Okay, this uh, certificate is uh, certified that uh, Professor Monsarab Yamabai has contributed as a keynote speaker in our uh, conference. Uh, however, the Professor Monsarab has a lecture, so she already leave, but thank you and I hope to see you again in the next year. And then the other certificate, please. I'm sorry, the committee, can you show the other certificate for uh, Professor Nick? So this certificate is certified to the Associate Professor PSCHM, Dr. Nick Ahmad Nizam Malik Nick Malik, that has been contributed as the keynote speaker in uh, the fourth ISMAR 2022. 
2020 and 22. So I hope we can maintain this collaboration and see you in the next year in the fifth ISMART. Okay, thank you very much. Okay, for the uh, next session will be uh, master. <laughs> I will be returned to our master of ceremony. Thank you. Okay, thank you uh, once again for the moderator. And uh, before we start uh, on our agenda, we would like to take this opportunity to have a group photo along with attendance on the Zoom meeting. So uh, to Excellencies keynote speakers, the moderator as well as participants are welcome to take a position and kindly turn on your camera. Okay, get ready for page one. One, two, three. Okay, thank you. And everybody on the page two. One, two, three. Okay, thank you very much for the attendance. And once again, um, for our keynote speakers, give applause to our keynote speakers. Okay, thank you. At this moment, uh, we'll be listening to the presentation of Research Hub by Mr. Akbar Farid Hasibuan. So to Mr. Akbar Farid Hasibuan, the time is yours. Honorable all to keynote speakers and all participants. Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. I'm honored to have opportunity to present Research Hub in the ISMART event. In the next five until 10 minutes, I will introduce Research Hub. But first, uh, let me introduce myself. Uh, I am Akbar Farid. Uh, I am founder and CEO of Research Hub. And I work in research animal model since uh, 2012. Uh, to, to know about Research Hub, uh, I will uh, play short video. Uh, help me to play this video. Do you feel stuck with your research or cannot find the fast laboratory services? Maybe you are depressed due to waiting for the regent or queuing the services. Don't worry, everything is in the Research Hub, the one and only place you can entrust your research acceleration. Laboratory networking all over Indonesia, lots and lots of researchers and analysts, ordering regent and laboratory tools incredibly fast. Complete facility for animal models. Find and discuss with our expert your research solution. Research Hub Indonesia, researchhub.ca co.id 
uh, this is uh, our video. I'm so sorry because in uh, my slideshow, the video is doesn't uh, play well. So I will go to the next slide. I'm so sorry. Uh, this is uh, my, uh, this is my purpose to for research hub. If you have didn't have expert, didn't have facilities, so we are the solution because we will uh, provide for you. Next. Uh, we have uh, facilities and also we provide the animal experiment model and also we have a uh, Wistar, Sprig, Dolly, Popsy and also C57BL. The next slide. Uh, this picture, it's so uh, about individual ventilated sketch. Uh, if we have research about uh, food intake, so we can use the individual ventilated case. And also if we have research about uh, to analyze feces or urine, we can use metabolic kits like uh, this. And also we have a breeding place, a breeding laboratory for rat and mice. The next slide. Uh, this is our new facility about zebrafish animal model. Uh, can you start? The video. In the left video, left video. Okay, next. Ah, this is uh, our research hub, uh, laboratory development. Now we have two places in uh, Java Island, first in Malang and the second in Pokerto. So we call for all participants or also uh, attendee. If you want to partner with us, so we can be a partnership. The next. Uh, this is our official partner. We have uh, a lot partner to help the research. Next. Uh, this is uh, our contact. If you want to contact us, you can contact here. So the, the last thing in Indonesia, we know about uh, go food or grab food or soupy food. They have service to deliver food to us. So we went, we want to be like them in the service. So we deliver research facility and also the expert to, to researcher. Uh, thank you. Finally, we are the next GoLab to make your research easier. Thank you. Okay, thank you uh, to the uh, Mr. Akbar Barik Hasibuan from Research Hub. And uh, ladies and gentlemen, after this, we have a break schedule for 15 minutes and the parallel session will begin at uh, 10.40. During the parallel session, each participant will be assigned to, uh, by the operator or host the, to the breakout room, room A, B, C or D 
according to your schedule. So I would like to remind you to rename your profile into room A, B, C, or D underscore full name. Uh, and if you are not presenting, you can also join the parallel room. So please ask the missing host for this. Okay. Um, after this, we have a break and see you again at 10.40.
Do you feel stuck with your research or cannot find the fast laboratory services? Maybe you are depressed due to waiting for the regent or queuing the services. Don't worry, everything is in the Research Hub, the one and only place you can entrust your research acceleration. Laboratory networking all over Indonesia, lots and lots of researchers and analysts, ordering Regent and laboratory tools incredibly fast, complete facility for animal models. Find and discuss with our expert your research solution. Research Hub Indonesia, researchhub.co.id. Do you feel stuck with your research or cannot find the fast laboratory services? Maybe you are depressed due to waiting for the regent or queuing the services. Don't worry, everything is in the Research Hub, the one and only place you can entrust your research acceleration. Laboratory networking all over Indonesia, lots and lots of researchers and analysts, ordering regent and laboratory tools incredibly fast, complete facility for animal models. Find and discuss with our expert your research solution. Research Hub Indonesia, researchhub.co.id. Do you feel stuck with your research or cannot find the fast laboratory services? Maybe you are depressed due to waiting for the regent or queuing the services. Don't worry, everything is in the Research Hub, the one and only place you can entrust your research acceleration. Laboratory networking all over Indonesia, lots and lots of researchers and analysts, ordering regent and laboratory tools incredibly fast, complete facility for animal models. Find and discuss with our expert your research solution. Research Hub Indonesia, researchhub.co.id. Do you feel stuck with your research or cannot find the fast laboratory services? Maybe you are depressed due to waiting for the regent or queuing the services. Don't worry, everything is in the Research Hub, the one and only place you can entrust your research acceleration. Laboratory networking all over Indonesia, lots and lots of researchers and analysts, ordering regent and laboratory tools incredibly fast, complete facility for animal models. Find and discuss with our expert your research solution. Research Hub Indonesia, researchhub.co.id. Do you feel stuck with your research or cannot find the fast laboratory services? Maybe you are depressed due to waiting for the regent or queuing the services. Don't worry, everything is in the Research Hub, the one and only place you can entrust your research acceleration. Laboratory networking all over Indonesia, lots and lots of researchers and analysts, ordering regent and laboratory tools incredibly fast, complete facility for animal models. Find and discuss with our expert your research solution. Research Hub Indonesia, researchhub.co.id. Do you feel stuck with your research or cannot find the fast laboratory services? Maybe you are depressed due to waiting for the regent or queuing the services. Don't worry, everything is in the Research Hub, the one and only place you can entrust your research acceleration. Laboratory networking all over Indonesia, lots and lots of researchers and analysts, ordering regent and laboratory tools incredibly fast, complete facility for animal models. Find and discuss with our expert your research solution. Research Hub Indonesia, researchhub.co.id. Do you feel stuck with your research or cannot find the fast laboratory services? Maybe you are depressed due to waiting for the regent or queuing the services. 
Don't worry, everything is in the Research Hub, the one and only place you can entrust your research acceleration. Laboratory networking all over Indonesia, lots and lots of researchers and analysts, ordering Regent and laboratory tools incredibly fast. Complete facility for animal models. Find and discuss with our expert your research solution. Research Hub Indonesia, researchhub.co.id. Do you feel stuck with your research or cannot find the fast laboratory services? Maybe you are depressed due to waiting for the regent or queuing the services. Don't worry, everything is in the Research Hub, the one and only place you can entrust your research acceleration. Laboratory networking all over Indonesia, lots and lots of researchers and analysts, ordering Regent and laboratory tools incredibly fast. Complete facility for animal models. Find and discuss with our expert your research solution. Research Hub Indonesia, researchhub.co.id. Do you feel stuck with your research or cannot find the fast laboratory services? Maybe you are depressed due to waiting for the regent or queuing the services. Don't worry, everything is in the Research Hub, the one and only place you can entrust your research acceleration. Laboratory networking all over Indonesia, lots and lots of researchers and analysts, ordering Regent and laboratory tools incredibly fast. Complete facility for animal models. Find and discuss with our expert your research solution. Research Hub Indonesia, researchhub.co.id. Do you feel stuck with your research or cannot find the fast laboratory services? Maybe you are depressed due to waiting for the regent or queuing the services. Don't worry, everything is in the Research Hub, the one and only place you can entrust your research acceleration. Laboratory networking all over Indonesia, lots and lots of researchers and analysts, ordering Regent and laboratory tools incredibly fast. Complete facility for animal models. Find and discuss with our expert your research solution. Research Hub Indonesia, researchhub.co.id. Do you feel stuck with your research or cannot find the fast laboratory services? Maybe you are depressed due to waiting for the regent or queuing the services. Don't worry, everything is in the Research Hub, the one and only place you can entrust your research acceleration. Laboratory networking all over Indonesia, lots and lots of researchers and analysts, ordering Regent and laboratory tools incredibly fast. Complete facility for animal models. Find and discuss with our expert your research solution. Research Hub Indonesia, researchhub.co.id. Do you feel stuck with your research or cannot find the fast laboratory services? Maybe you are depressed due to waiting for the regent or queuing the services. Don't worry, everything is in the Research Hub, the one and only place you can entrust your research acceleration. Laboratory networking all over Indonesia, lots and lots of researchers and analysts, ordering Regent and laboratory tools incredibly fast. Complete facility for animal models. Find and discuss with our expert your research solution. Research Hub Indonesia, researchhub.co.id. Do you feel stuck with your research or cannot find the fast laboratory services? Maybe you are depressed due to waiting for the regent or queuing the services. Don't worry, everything is in the Research Hub, the one and only place you can entrust your research acceleration. Laboratory networking all over Indonesia, lots and lots of researchers and analysts, ordering Regent and laboratory tools incredibly fast. Complete facility for animal models. Find and discuss with our expert your research solution. Research Hub Indonesia, researchhub.co.id. 
Do you feel stuck with your research or cannot find the fast laboratory services? Maybe you are depressed due to waiting for the regent or queuing the services. Don't worry, everything is in the Research Hub, the one and only place you can entrust your research acceleration. Laboratory networking all over Indonesia, lots and lots of researchers and analysts, ordering Regent and laboratory tools incredibly fast, complete facility for animal models. Find and discuss with our expert your research solution. Research Hub Indonesia, researchhub.co.id. Do you feel stuck with your research or cannot find the fast laboratory services? Maybe you are depressed due to waiting for the regent or queuing the services. Don't worry, everything is in the Research Hub, the one and only place you can entrust your research acceleration. Laboratory networking all over Indonesia, lots and lots of researchers and analysts, ordering regent and laboratory tools incredibly fast, complete facility for animal models. Find and discuss with our expert your research solution. Research Hub Indonesia, researchhub.co.id. Do you feel stuck with your research or cannot find the fast laboratory services? Maybe you are depressed due to waiting for the regent or queuing the services. Hey, good afternoon, everyone. Thank you all for joining us today. This is an oral presentation session, Room A, in the second day of We Smart 2022. And I'm a moderator of this session, Tomohiko Sasase from Kyoto University, Japan. In this session, we have uh, eight oral presenters from Indonesia and Japan. Each presenter has 10 minutes for uh, their presentation, and we make 10 minutes discussion time after first three presentations and after last five presentations. So uh, I'd like to welcome our first speaker from Tokyo University of Agriculture, Japan, Ms. Kana Watanabe. The title of her presentation is Pathophysiological Analysis of Kidney and Comparison of Male and Female SVT Fatty Rats an obese model of type 2 diabetes mellitus fed a high sucrose and high fat diet. Ms. Watanabe, are you ready to start your presentation? Are you okay? Mike is still mute, I think. Okay, thank you, Dr. Sakase. Thank you for this opportunity. I'm Kana Watanabe. I'm a master's student at the Tokyo University of Agriculture. Today, I will talk about diabetic kidney disease. The slide shows background of type 2 diabetes mellitus and diabetic kidney disease. At the first time, I will talk about type 2 diabetes mellitus. From this point on, it's called TDM. The region of TDM that continues hyperglycemia. In worldwide, 19% of DM patients are D2DM. The fact of D2DM is obesity, food style, and lack of exercise, etc. When D2DM progresses, that leads to DKD. And DKD has most patients 
in complication. When DKD progresses, the kidney function will be decreased. Therefore, it needs to do an artificial dialysis. Moreover, QOL will be decreased. Because of that, analysis of DKD has important roles for early treatment and prevention. Second, I'll talk about kidney function. Kidney consists of glomerulus and tubules. Glomerulus filters blood and make low urine. Tubules reabsorb glucose from low urine and uh, at to blood tube. You can see previous study of DKD in STD fatty rat. We used these animals. STD fatty rat is obvious to DM model. It was established by introducing the obvious disease to SD rat of normal model. It, so, it, it shows polyuria, polyphagia, and polydipagia. The region is more severe in males. In the previous study, uh, as a result of feeding SD fatty rat with 0.3% salt water and remove a single kidney, which shows severe region. However, because of high blood pressure for salt water stress, which resulted hypertensive model rather than DKD model. Therefore, in this study, the possibility of a an, an new animal model as a DKD was analyzed. Animal models are male and female of SD rat and STD fatty rat. Diets, of, diets are she eats of standard diet and quick fat of high sucrose, high fat diet. When we started to this study, uh, sorry, we started to this study when ST rat and STT fatty rat were five weeks old and conducted under under condition of free feeding and free drinking. We necrophagied in male and female of SD rat at 26 weeks old, in male of STT fatty rat at 28 weeks old, in female of STT fatty rat at 38 weeks old. In this study, some animals were, uh, some animals died Three animals were survived the day of necrophysi in males. Five, two animals were survived the day of necrophysi in females. You can see the graphs that were final body weight and kidney weight at necrophysi. Asterisk shows versus SD rat, and triangle shows versus another text, has sharp shows versus C2. Body weight significantly decreased in female of STT fatty rat quick fat. Five, relative weight of kidney significantly increase in female of STT fatty rat quick fat group. You can see result of gene expression and blood biochemistry. First, the expression. The inflammatory MCP1 and the fibrosis-related alpha-SMA were significantly increased in female STT fatty rat C is group. Second, blood biochemistry. Blood glucose levels significantly in male of STT fatty rat by total cholesterol significantly in female of STT fatty rat. Nephropathy parameters by blood urea nitrogen and creatinine were tended to increase in male of STT fatty rat quick fat group. The slide shows his pathological observation in kidney, to kidney of tubules. It is staining which can show 
information, etc. Serious red staining, which can show fibrosis of red color. Or red staining, which can show repeat of red color. Estirate uh, was not observed significantly pathology. However, STT fatty rats were observed um, inflammatory cell infiltration, um, duration, regeneration, urinary cast, and uh, fibrosis of tubules. This region especially Especially, this region tended to be worse by quick fat in, ST, in male of STD fatty rats. In AG staining, the fatty changes were, was observed. So therefore, we did oil red oil staining. The fatty positivity was observed in same location. This, this location also tended to be worse by uh, in quick fat group. The slide shows histopathological observation in kidney of glomerulus. In glomerulus, enlargement and fibrosis were observed. Especially the region of glomerulus was shown in female of STT fatty rat quick fat group. You can see results and discussion of kidney pathology. This region, this region shows male STT fatty rats shows the region, um, especially in two tubules. And male STT fatty rat shows the, of the, uh, the region, especially in glomerulus. This region tended to be worse by quick fat. In STT fatty, uh, STT fatty rats have only died in, uh, in quick fat group. Therefore, DKD might be exacerbated by quick fat. This slide shows conclusion. Loading quick fat on animal with a background of diabetes causes inflammation and fatty metamorphosis. And that leads to fibrosis. In addition, the location of Pathology was different in, ma in males and females. Females were targeted at the tubules, uh, sorry, glomerulus, while males were targeted at the tubules, suggesting the possibility of a new DKD model. Thank you for your attention. That's all. Thank you. Okay, Ms. Watanabe, thank you for your presentation. And now I'd like to introduce next presenter from Tokyo University of Agriculture, Japan, Ms. Marika Toma. Title of her, of her presentation is Investigation of the Usefulness of HLFADPTG Mice as Biomarkers for NAFOD and NASH. Toma-san, please feel free to begin your presentation. Can you see me? Can you see my screen? Yes, it's okay. Thank you for your time today. 
I'm Mike Poma. I'd like to talk about investigation on the usefulness of human LGBT teaching maths as by Marcus Fuanahodi Nash. First of all, I'd like to start with by explaining Nahudi Nash. No alcoholic fatty liver disease or Nahudi is a general term for liver disease that causes fatty liver and hepatitis in spite of the absence of alcohol consumption or temporary due to a variety of factors, including dietary factors, oxidative stress, and so on. Nafrdi is progressive into two categories, symptomless non-alcoholic fatty liver or nafu, or uh, chronic progressive non-alcoholic steroid hepatitis or NASH. Further progression of NASH may lead to cellulosis and hepatocellular carcinoma. Therefore, at this point, it needs to be detected and treated before the onset of NASH. In focus on oxidative stress, the model animal cells in this experiment is a clean deficient methionine reduced amino acid diet or CDAA phase model. The CDA diet is an amino acid diet that depleted in green and reduced in methionine in the diet. This condition caused significant reduction in hospital clean synthesis and reduction in synthesis of the LDO, which transports hepatic triggers right out of the liver, leading to fat accumulation in the liver. It has been shown that oxidative stress induced pathology from an early stage. In this study, we decided to use this model because it induced obvious oxidative stress and hep hepatic fatty change. Therefore, the factors that we have found with a focus on oxidative stress is liver type fatty acid binding protein or LFVP. It is upregulated by oxidative stress, ischemia, and so on. In patients with NASH, from LFVP level has been reported to be higher the healthy subject and correlates with liver injury related parameters ST, RT, and NAS score. It has been also reported to be a biomarker that, uh, that can consistently assess prognosis from early chronic hepatitis to hepatellar carcinoma in patients with human liver disease. However, less is known about LFVP as an early biomarker of liver disease. Next, I'd like to move on to materials and methods that we have used. We aim to investigate the potential of blood LFABP as biomarker in early stage of liver disease using an animal model of CDA induced NAFD NASH. Animals used were 16 week old male. LFAVP TG mice. These mice have been transgenic for humans. Diets use C2 as control, CDAA, and hybrid diet as pathological groups. Experimental periods were set for 1, 3, 7, or 14 days. The analysis items are shown on this slide. The main part of the test is an ELISA. 
the Eliza looks at the LFAVP in slum or mice that have been forced to express human LFAVP. First, this slide shows slum LFAVP level at Eliza and blood chemistry. Slum LFAVP levels were increased over time with CDAA with a significant increase in expression in 40 days groups. The two graphs above are ST and LT activities. The bottom two graphs are correlation between LFABP and these activities. Vertical axis is LFABP concentration. Personal axis is ST and LT activities. RFVP concentration compared to slum ST and LT activities shows a strong positive correlation. Next, this slide shows histopathological analysis of the liver. In the liver, an obvious fatty change was observed in the CDA groups. The white rounded area is a fat droplet, and that was the hallmark of lesion in Nafridi Nash. Diffuse hepatocyte adipogenesis was enhanced by CDA diet, and the lesion intensified over time. This lesion is apparent especially in CDA 14 days groups, while in hyper diet, localized and liver marginal zone fatty change, yet their change were weak. This is very slide. On the basis of our research, CDA treated Human LFABP tissue mice are more useful as a NAFLD NASH model than hyper diet one because serum LFABP reveal much the histopathological analysis of the liver image. The concentration of LFABP was correlated with ST and LT activities, indicating that LFABP should be useful as a biomarker in early tissue of NAFLD. Thank you for attention. That's all. Hey, Ms. Thomas, thank you for your uh, presentation. And next presenter is from uh, Gajamaya, Gajamada University, Indonesia, Ms. Enda Sri Parvi. The title of her presentation is Anti-angiogenic effect of non-contact electrocapacitive cancer selfie on DMBA induced rat breast can, uh, breast tumor model. So, Ms. Palpi, please start your presentation. Okay, uh, sorry. Can you see my PPT? Hello? Okay, now I can hear you. Yeah, it is clear? Yes. Okay, yeah. Thank you very much for the time. Good morning, everybody. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Uh, I'm Enda. Today, I would like to present our paper titled Anti-Angiogenic Effect of Non-contact electrocapacitive cancer therapy on GMBA-induced red breast tumor model. Okay. And for the first, uh, let me describe our backgrounds. In this research, breast tumor is the most dominant tumor or cancer in women in both Indonesia and the world. And it has 
height mortality. And until now, breast tumor has several treatments, consists of surgery, radiation therapy, and then chemotherapy. However, chemotherapy has so many weaknesses. For example, hair loss, vomit and nausea, body weight decreasing, and then mucositis. Therefore, some researchers try to find the device uh, to reduce the side effect of chemotherapy. And one of the inventions is electrocapacitive cancer therapy or ECCT, invented and developed Dr. Warsito Purwotaruno, an Indonesian. And since ECCT patent at 2012, it has been investigated in vitro and in vivo. And now we observe how the ECCT effect on angiogenesis, especially during breast tumor model. Okay. Um, why ECCT is possible to treat a breast tumor? Uh, that is because ECCT is one of the devices produce alternating current electric field or AC electric field. And based on previous studies, alternating current electric field uh, play important role to inhibit tumor growth due to antiproliferative and pro-apoptotic capacities. And its effect on angiogenesis uh, has been proven by non-regulating HIF1 alpha and also VEGF, especially VEGFA. Therefore, it is possible for ECCT uh, to be anti-angiogenic device to treat breast tumor. Why angiogenesis is important? Uh, because uh, angiogenesis is the new blood vessel development uh, in both normal and pathological condition. Uh, one of examples in pathological condition is breast tumor. In breast tumor, we will increase the expression of its IF1 alpha as a trans transcription factor for VEGF, especially VEGFA. Thus, the expression of its IF1 alpha and also VEGFA um, can be used as a potential marker of angiogenesis. Thus, in this research, we have objective to investigate the impact of ECCT on the HIF1 alpha and VEGF A expression during red breast tumor angiogenesis. And to conduct our research, we used materials described here. And this is our method. We have four treatment groups consists of NINT, non-induction non-therapy, NIT, non-induction therapy, INT, induction non-therapy, and the last one is IT, induction therapy. Induction, it means that breast tumor induction using DMBL as a carcinogen, while for the therapy is ECCT therapy used 150 kilohertz and 18 VPB for 21 days and 10 hours per day. After finishing all of the treatments, we collected our samples by using RNA lighter and stored at minus 20 degrees Celsius for the next steps. And for the first, we designed our primers and primers were as follows. And next, next step was RNA isolation, cDNA synthesis, QPCR running to detect the expression of its IF1 alpha and VEGFA and continued by anal analysis of gene expression. And finally, data analysis using ANOVA. And this is uh, the protocol running of its IF1 alpha and VEGFA. Uh, but gene expression only have differences in annealing temperature which is 56.4 degrees Celsius for HIF1 alpha, while 61.0 degrees Celsius. And this uh, 
graph illustrates our results. And as you can see here, that HIF1 alpha and VEGFA have been upregulated significantly in breast tumor condition. We can see here from INT group. However, only VEGFA has been downregulated significantly after ECCT therapy. And this is our results of electroporesis. And this figure will describe uh, the, the reason why uh, pot gene expression have been upregulated significantly in breast tumor. During breast tumor, will occur high level of uh, cell proliferation. This condition will induce hypoxia and the, hypox the hypoxia condition will increase the expression of uh, hypoxia inducible factor one alpha or HIF one alpha. And this expression as um, transcription factor for VEGFA. Thus, it is clear um, in breast tumor that the expression of HIF1 alpha and VEGFA um, will be upregulated significantly. And this figure will describe uh, why only VEGFA has been downregulated after ECCT therapy and not for HIF1 alpha expression. In breast tumor, will induce hypoxia condition in which it will increase the expression of HIF1 alpha. However, the VEGFA expression uh, not only produced by HIF1 alpha, but also by specificity protein one. As you can see here that VEGF promoter, not only it IF1 alpha, but also specificity protein one or SP1. In this condition, the expression of SP1 will involve PI3K and AKT pathway by using growth factor as a signal. Thus, in this research, our argument is that the VEGFA expression more regulated by HIF1 alpha independent pathway, otherwise uh, HIF1 alpha dependent pathway. But we, we still need uh, the result of SP1 still, still in process. <laughs> and finally, uh, we conclude that ECCT may inhibit angiogenesis in breast tumor by inhibiting VEGFA mRNA expression. And we thanks to um, Indonesian Endowment Fund for Education or LPDP through BUDDN 2019 scholarship. And we thanks to also Program Pengembangan Teknologi Industri or PPTI 2018 for sample providing. And here are our references used in this PPT. And that's all. Thank you. Uh, and now back to the moderator. Wassalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. OK, thank you very much. And uh, it was such an inter interesting presentation. And now we have 10 minutes discussion time for questions. And I welcome your comments as well to three presentations. You can ask uh, any presenter and ask question by microphone or by chat. So anyone has question? Any question to Ms. Watanabe? Yes. You have any question? Okay. Okay, may I have one question to uh, Ms. Watanabe? Uh, why the glomerular changes first occur in female SVD fatty labs? Do you have any 
and speculation? Sorry, uh, please one more. I have a uh, question to Watanabe-san. Yes. Why the glomerular changes first occur in the female SDT fatty rat rather than a male SDT fatty rat? Yes, thank you for your question. In previous study, female SDT fatty rats are more likely to be hyperlipidemia than males. In this study, we used quick fat with high sucrose, high fat diet. Therefore, combination of hyperlipidemia and quick feeding quick fat uh, might, might be synergistically exacerbate the glomerulus. Okay, thank you very much. Thank you. Any other question to Ms. Watanabe? Or uh, any question to Thomas san Ms. Toma. Or we have one question from Professor Pachia to Thomas san um, uh, NAFOD encompasses a spectrum of conditions from simple steatosis to uh, NASH and liver cirrhosis. NAFOD is a hepatic manifest manifestation of metabolic syndrome. You use the human LFABP transgenic mice. Can you explain the expression, concentration, and activity of blood LFABP derived from endogenous expression or transgenic or accumulation of endogenous and transgenic expression FABP? Do you understand my question, Thomas? Oh, here is a question from Professor Pachia. Thank you for your question. Uh, the question is, uh, you use uh, the FAB transgenic from human, isn't it? Human L. FABP transgenic mice. Okay, so you saw the result is the expression of LFABP. This expression is from endogenous or from transgenics that you use from human uh, LFABP or the accumulation of endogenous and transgenic expression. Could you explain your results? In this study, I am looking at human LFABP activity of transgenic mice LFABP, but it is also elevated mice LFABP too, but the mechanisms of expression LFABP is not yet clear. I investigated this as a future research this maybe you can speak in japanese it's okay <laughs> <laughs> japanese language is okay <laughs> okay maybe she didn't uh, measure the uh, mice lfavp she only measure human lfavp so we can, uh, she cannot distinguish uh, each other i think yeah, yeah, but uh, actually, sometimes it depends on the promoter, isn't it? On uh, uh, Maybe it's, uh, yes, it's yeah, using promoter. Uh, under the uh, similar model mm -hmm, mm -hmm. using transgenic and <clears throat> the expression endogenous sometimes uh, vastly than the transgenic expression. Mm -hmm. uh, so uh, maybe this is for 
for masa and other. Uh, if we if we use the transgenic mice or transgenic model, we also to explore the endogenous expression because sometimes, uh, for example, to for to know this expression, uh, usually I use uh, in situ hybridization uh, for transgenic, and then for endogenous I use the uh, uh, immunohistochemistry. So the protein is from endogenous, but the uh, transcriptomic is from transgenic is better to know which uh, the expression in there uh, because this is the when I take the PhD in Okazaki and NIBP uh, so I, I did this rule mm -hmm. to confirm the expression is from endogenous or from transgenic mm -hmm. or accumulation of both of them. Just uh, idea for you, for the next uh, program for you. Thank you, uh, okay. Dr. Sasase. Thank you for your Thomas comments. <laughs> Maybe she, uh, it's her future task to distinguish uh, which uh, which LFA we be from, <laughs> endogenous or endogen uh, exogenous. Thank you, Professor Bachia. Thank you. And, uh, <laughs> and do you have any question to Dr. Harupi? Okay, I have one question to uh, Dr. Harupi. I think ECCT is a unique approach for cancer treatment, but um, I have a very simple question. How the electronic stimulation moderate the messenger RNA expression? Oh, <laughs> Still <you>. mute. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I I will repeat. <laughs> okay, okay. Uh, actually, uh, we know that um, electric field consists of uh, direct current and alternating current, and in this research we used only alternating current because between direct current or DC electric field uh, and alternating current have different effect, especially on angiogenesis. Mm -hmm. And the effect um, in force, uh, if DC will increase angiogenesis uh, while for the uh, alternative current or AC electric field will inhibit the angiogenesis. So if, well, um, I think that daily, um, effect of uh, electrical device mm -hmm. uh, as far as uh, the intensity and frequency quite low uh, and usually uh, we use a uh, direct current uh, electric field not alternating current because uh, for the alternating current uh, usually will have a high, high frequency and high intensity so for our daily activities only close to um, um, direct current commonly, I think. So it's okay for our our gene expression. I think. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I think it's interesting. The VEGF expression is uh, decreased uh, by uh, not the HIF one alpha pathway. <laughs> okay, thank you very much. You're welcome. Okay, uh, I'd like to move the uh, next presenter now. Next speaker is from Ravijala University, Indonesia, Dr. Eko Sianto. The title of his presentation is Enzymatic Synthesis of Cytotoxicity Activity of Phenolic Acid Glucosyl Ester in uh, Cholangio Carcinoma Cells. So Dr. Sianto, please begin your presentation.
Uh, good morning, everyone. First, I'm going to say thank you very much for giving me an opportunity to present our work in this conference. So uh, let me introduce myself. My name is uh, Ekosan Suyanto. And today, this morning, I would like to talk about our research with title and symmetric uh, synthesis and cytotoxicity activity of uh, phenolic acid glucose ester in carcinoma uh, cell. So uh, let me move to the introduction part to explain the background of this research. As we know that uh, carbohydrate can be found in conjugated sugar or glucoconjugates. And in our body, glucoconjugates are important compounds and consist of many different categories. There are many functions of glucoconjugate with uh, many scope for applications and glucoconjugate also can be found in glucoside form. And there are several previous research that reported about the utilization of a glucosylated uh, compound in cancer cell. For example, who et al. had reported that a beta acetosterol and its uh, conjugate beta acetosterol uh, glucoside from indigo vera zolengeriana uh, have anti-cancer activity on uh, hepatocellular cell lines, hub G2 and H7 by inducing apoptosis and the uh, conjugate has uh, higher activity than free aglycone. Previous studies also reveal about the effect of glucoside uh, derivative of alphanoid in human health. For example, apigenin 7 or glucoside has uh, ability to promote cell apoptosis and inhibit cell migration on HeLa cell and in, uh, it also has high uh, biological activity than its uh, glycon. The glucosidic compound can be hydrolyzed by enzyme in the gut to produce free uh, aglycon during absorption, so it has higher uh, stability, solubility, and confirm more uh, biological activity than uh, glycon. However, as far as I know, the effect of phenolic acid glucosid ester as anti-cancer agent were still unclear especially in colon carcinoma cell. So I think uh, it's very interesting to investigate it. Glycosylation can improve stability, uh, solubility, bioavailability, physicochemical and uh, physiological properties of the glycoconjugate so that they become a uh, producing functional compound. According to Pandey et al, glycosylation plays a critical role during interaction between a drug and its cellular target in drug pharmacodynamic as it can change the cellular localization and uh, physicochemical uh, properties of the compound as well as their uh, biological activities. Commonly, chemical method was used to synthesize glycoside by a chemical glycosylation reaction, but it's hard to acquire high stereospecificity or regular selectivity of the reaction. So to cope with these issues, enzyme catalyzed glycosylation has been recognized as, uh, as a feasible tool to, uh, synthesize, to synthesis of glycosylated product. Enzymatic uh, method approach can help uh, synthesizing complex glycan in a selective and specific way. There are uh, several enzymes uh, can be involved in this reaction, such as uh, glycosyl transferase, glycosyl hydrolase, uh, and then glycosyl, I mean glycosyl phosphorylase, and trans glycosidase. In this result, we are focusing to use enzyme in glycosyl hydrolase uh, family. And hydrolase, hydro, uh, I mean uh, glycosyl hydrolase uh, family are a family of uh, enzyme that can catalyze hydrolysis reaction at the anomeric carbon of or uh, glycosides leading to uh, hemiacetal, leading to form uh, hemiacetal or hemiketal and free aglycone. And one of enzyme in the glucoside hydrolase uh, family is uh, beta glucosidase. This is a 3D structure of glucoside uh, hydrolase. And in, in addition to hyd hydrolysis activity, uh, many beta glucosidase also have high transglucosylation uh, activity and related enzyme have been found to act as transglucosidase which act to transfer a glucosyl moiety from one uh, glucoconjugate to another with little uh, hydrolysis through a retaining uh, mechanism. One of the beta glucosidase is os 9 b 31 and this is a superposition of homology model of os 9 b 31 transglucosidase on the crystal structure of the OS9, uh, I mean OS3 B6 beta glucosidase covalent intermediate with two uh, fluoroalpha D uh, glucoside. 
since uh, glucosylmoities are the key structural unit in many clinical drugs, therefore we propose idea to use os glucose p one and its mutant to synthesize uh, phenolic acid uh, glucosyl ester and investigate the inhibitor effect of glucoconjugate product in colon carcinoma cells. Colon carcinoma cell is one of type of uh, liver cancer, and the liver cancer is the fifth or most commonly occurring cancer in men, and uh, nine most uh, commonly occurring cancer in women. So it needs prevention and treatment to cure this uh, disease. And colon carcinoma can be classified into two types, including intrahepatic colon carcinoma and extrahepatic colon carcinoma, and commonly liver flux. Uh, Opistorsis uh, viverini is known as a major risk factor for colon carcinoma development in Asia. And there are several current approaches for liver cancer treatment, but it has adverse effect and could be associated with eventual drug resistance. So uh, many researchers try to find new type of treatment which can be tested in clinical trials including a uh, bioactive compound. So bioactive compound and many pitochemicals have recently been uh, suggested as uh, anti-cancer adjuvant therapies because of their uh, anti-proliferative and uh, pro-apoptotic uh, properties. In this uh, research, since uh, cancer including uh, colon carcinoma are uh, dangerous and tend to increase over time, so in this report, this research aims to investigate the ability of os p one for glycosylation of phenolic acid compounds to obtain glucoside or other glucosylated compounds, and second, to determine the bioactivity of phenolic acid glucosal ester and to investigate the inhibitory effect of phenolic acid glucosal ester in colony carcinoma cell. So, to achieve the objective of research, uh, first, protein expression and uh, purification were performed. And this figure is showing a workflow of protein expression and purification to uh, purify the protein. And this figure show about STS page result of OS and the glute 31 well type and is mutant after the second IMAC. According to this result, I succeed to purify the protein after purification using cobalt IMAC method. After that, I tried to use this enzyme in the enzymatic reaction to synthesize phenolic acid glucose ester or glucose acid compound and this is this is a workflow of the enzymatic reaction and then this is a several glucose acceptor that i use and this is a glucose uh, donor i use uh, p and p glucose p nitro uh, penyl beta d glucose uh, and enzyme activity as i were determined by releasing of for nitrophenol and measure and absorbent for 105 nanometer using a micro reader. And this figure shows the activity of s one well type and its mutant in several Google cell acceptor. You can see in this figure that according to this uh, result, uh, it seems like that uh, os 9 one mutant had higher activity than well type on several glucose acceptor and uh, ferulic acid is the best uh, substrate for the enzymatic reaction and then to identify and detect the glucosylated product after enzymatic reaction by was and big one so the trans glucosylation product were detected by tlc and ultra high performance liquid uh, chromatography and this figure saw uh, several TLC results after enzymatic reaction by osm glut 31 and mutant. We can see uh, the new spot on TLC. So the product of the enzymatic reaction and this is a uh, glucosyl ester. And then this is a uh, glucoside of the aglycon after enzymatic uh, reaction. And also the TLC result for hydroxybenzoic acid and phenolic acid by osm one well type and its mutant show the similar pattern with previous result, which is osm one mutant tends to generate glucose compound and glucosyl uh, ester. And here, these are chromatogram profile of enzymatic reaction of uh, several uh, of uh, of several phenolic compound by osm one well type and its uh, mutant using 
uh, P. nitropenyl beta D. glucopyranosate as a glucosyl donor. According to this result, we can see in the peak of uh, PNPG and PNP, PNP and uh, a glycon and a glycon. That is a uh, glucosyl ester and glucosate. So this is uh, the result of uh, the enzymatic reaction by using our standard glue 31 well tap. And then when we use uh, the mutant, it looks like that uh, the mutant can uh, generate phenolic acid glucosyl ester and phenolic acid uh, glucoside. <coughs> For W H and W N and W L. <clears throat> so uh, after that, the product were fraction by Sepadec LH uh, twenty column chromatography to obtain the pure glucose product. And the aim of this. Uh, work is to purify glucose product after enzymatic reaction and verify the structure and purify of the product. So the fraction containing glucose conjugate were dissolved in the NMR solvent, and then uh, proton NMR and 13 carbon NMR spectra of the compound were determined. This analysis will verify the structure and purity of the glucose conjugate. And here I'm showing a result of the spectra of phenolic acid glucosyl ester after analyzed by proton uh, NMR, by uh, proton NMR and uh, carbon 13 uh, and, and, and NMR. I mean. <laughs> so uh, to know the activity of the product, the activity of glucose conjugate was determined by DPPH uh, assay. And then the result of scavenging activity of a uh, phenolic acid glucosyl ester as shown in this uh, figure. <clears throat> so uh, it's, uh, according to this result, a beta glucogalin had higher uh, scavenging activity than other uh, glucoconjugate, I mean phenolic acid uh, glucosyl ester. Then to achieve the objective whether phenolic acid glucose ester have uh, inhibitor effect or not in colon carcinoma. So uh, the cytotoxicity activity of phenolic acid glucosyl ester were investigated by using uh, SRB assay. And then this figure are solving the effect of phenolic acid glucosyl ester in colon carcinoma cell. Line. And these are the screening result of cytotoxicity activity of phenolic acid glucose ester on PKU 2, 1, 3. A, you can see in this figure that uh, ferulic acid glucosyl ester, picomeric acid glucosyl ester, phenolic acid glucosyl ester, hydroxybenzoic glucosyl ester, transdynamic glucosyl ester, syringic acid uh, glucosyl ester have no cytotoxicity activity on kqu 213 a even at high concentration. But we can see in this figure that synaptic acid glucosyl ester and uh, glucogalin or beta glucogalin have cytotoxicity activity, but uh, glucogalin uh, had higher activity than synaptic acid glucosyl ester to inhibit 50% cell proliferation. By using screening result, the selected glucoconjugate glucogalin uh, <coughs> were, to, were used for a uh, full uh, experiment to make sure the cytotoxicity activity. So I investigated the inhibitory effect of selected glucoconjugate, I mean beta glucosyl in three types of uh, colony carcinoma cell line at optimum concentration range, including PQ1, PQ213A, KQ100, KQ and PQ055, uh, and also MMNK1, immortalized colony set cell line, and IMR90 as uh, normal cell line. and then the cell morphology also will be observed under microscope to know whether there is any effect of the glucoconjugate to uh, cell morphology. And these are the results for the inhibitory effect of glucosyl on PKU 213A and PKU uh, 055. And 
Nah ini satu posisi di MTQT of beta global ini on the day of the day of the day is uh, higher than on the day of the day of the day. And also this is also is the resume of the experiment for the effect of local ECC colon carcinoma and normal cell length. KKU055 is more sensitive than KKU213 and KKU100. KKU100 is less sensitive than KKU213 and KKU055. Based on the result, I would like to I would like to summary that uh, OS9 biglu 31 trans glucosidase and its mutant transfer a glucosyl moiety from nitropenyl beta di uh, glucopiranoside as glucose uh, donor to glucose acceptor through transglucosylation uh, reaction and OS9 diglutathione mutant had higher activity than wild type and beta glucogalin had higher cytotoxicity activity than other phenolic acid glucose ester in colon carcinoma cell and the optimum concentration of uh, beta glucogalin to inhibit 50% uh, colon carcinoma cell proliferation at around Uh, 4.88 micromolar on KQ055 and KQ055 is more sensitive than other type of colon carcinoma cell line. However, beta glucogalin has no cytotoxicity activity on uh, normal cell line IMR90. I would like to express my sincere thanks to Ajahn Jim, Professor Jim, and Associate Professor Dr. Titima Talapnin and Also, uh, GKC lab member and CT lab member. <coughs> This result was supported by AIA and GAN and Research and Development Support Fund uh, of uh, Thailand. I think that will be the end of my uh, presentation today. Thank you for your attention. Okay, Dr. Sianto, thank you for uh, sharing your great work. I think this is important to develop new anti cancer drug efficiency. Thank you very much again. And uh, next presenter is from Ibrahim University, Indonesia, Ms. Devi, uh, Devi Rati Titrosari. The title of her presentation is Blazarin and Serial Mesoblazarin Revealed Therapeutic Agent for Eczema, Molecular Docking Approach. So Ms. Sari, you may begin now. Okay. Okay. okay, thank you for the opportunity. My name is Devi Rati Tirtosari, and my partner is Mary Diahnensi for Pharmacy Department, Faculty of Medical Science, Universitas Ibrahim Sukubondo, and I am also a member of the Center of University Malang Indonesia will present about the Brazilian and 3O metal Brazilian rebuild therapeutic again for eczema based on the molecular docking approach. The first is eczema. Eczema is a uh, inflamed and irritated skin triggered by genetic and environmental factor such as the microbial infection and allergen. Eczema also was characterized by loss lipid, uh, dry skin, redness, redness skin, and itchy skin. Eczema also causes uh, immune dysregulation, involve antigen and allergen uptake by epidermal dendritic cell, dermal dendritic cell, and Langerhans cell. Also activate a uh, sensory nerve, leading to re release the cytokine and interleukin, uh, including the interleukin 2 and interleukin 15 that are the activate the JAK3, and JAK3 will Uh, bone to statry to release the IL-10, interleukin-10. And the uh, Kaisal Kinyasa Pan Herb uh, is a traditional herb that uh, uh, easily found in Situ Bondo, including in the forest uh, near from Situ Bondo. And previous study, we, 
we detect the several several bioactive bioactive compound from Kaisal Pinia Sapan Heartwood extract. There are the Brazilian and metal Brazilian short inhibition of NS3 of DNP uh, for for the dengue virus and sapanan compound perform biological activities as anti-inflammatory, anti-diabetes, antioxidant, antibacterial activity, and anti-neurodegenerative disease. Also, a uh, previous study from our group showed the sapanan compound perform antiplasmodial activity through in vitro and in silico study, and sapanan compound also maintain the blood glucose and blood pressure and inhibited the alpha amylase and alpha glucosidase. Also inhibited alpha reductase leading to nephropathy mechanism in diabetes mellitus. So the objective of this study to compare the Brazilian and 3O metal Brazilian from Kaisalpinia sapan but would extract as eczema antagonist. Uh, we used the in silico study. The first, we retrieved the ligand from the uh, PubGen NCPI database. We used the Brazilian with the CID 733 uh, A4 and 3O metal Brazilian. Uh, and we predict the pharmacokinetic uh, by using the PKGSM web, web server. Uh, besides that, also we retrieved the protein structure. We used the JAK3 protein structure from PDB or protein data bank. Uh, protein data bank with the PDB ID is 5TPP and we predict the cavities by using the molecular virtual doctor. And we redock the protein structure and ligand structure by using the molecular virtual doctor by uh, version 5 with the parameter more grip 0.3 Armstrong RMSD uh, less than 2 number of binding post is 5 and repetition 10 time. After that, we analyze the data by using the Discovery Studio version 21.1 and Pymol uh, version 2.5. And the next is the pharmacokinetic prediction. We use the several parameters, including the absorption, distribution, metabolism, expression, and toxicity. Uh, in absorption, the 3O metal gradient show the lower uh, water solubility in log mole per liter indicating uh, there are more soluble than uh, Brazilian. In Kakoto permeability, Brazilian more permeable than 3O metal Brazilian. And in skin permeability, uh, both of them uh, have similar, similar permeability in skin. And the distribution in PTSS, the 3O metal Brazilian lower than uh, Brazilian. Also the fraction <coughs> and bone, was lower and CNS or central nervous system permeability uh, lower than Brazilian. Uh, in metabolism, uh, part of the Brazilian and 3O metal Brazilian was uh, not a substrate for CYP2G6, uh, indicating that the Brazilian and 3O metal Brazilian was rapidly metabolized by the cell. And then in the parameter expression, there are uh, total clearance, 3O metal Brazilian higher than Brazilian, and the, uh, the rapport of the Brazilian and 3O metal Brazilian was not substrate as a renal OCT2 substrate. In toxicity, both of the Brazilian and 3O metal Brazilian showed MS toxicity, indicating there are mutagenicity. However, in hepatotoxicity, uh, there is no, no effect on, uh, or no toxic uh, in hepatocyte cell. Uh, based on the molecular docking, we show the we use the positive control, including the inhibitor for JAK3 protein. In, uh, there are uh, there is a N37H pyrrolol 2.2,3 dipyrimidine for phenylpropenamide as a native native control, inhibitor for JAK3. Uh, in this in this structure, 3D complex showed the Brazilian and 3O metal Brazilian show similar side with the positive control. There are the red color is a positive control and the Brazilian in uh, orange color and 3O metal Brazilian in a pink color. Uh, there is similar side with a positive control. Uh, we also found several active sites in 3O metal Brazilian was uh, 
high number, including the Leo 8, uh, 800, 828 and Valin 884, Alanin 853, and Asparakin 967. Uh, in, and Brazilian entry of metal, well, Brazilian entry of metal Brazilian also showed the similar active site with inhibitor. There are the alanine 966 and leucine 956 and valine 836 uh, and methionine 902. There are uh, indicating that the Brazilian entry of metal Brazilian has a potential activity to inhibit the chapter protein. Uh, entry of metal Brazilian more effective than the Brazilian because there are several uh, more several active sites, several active sites with which no not identified in Brazilian compound. And the two-dimensional structure show that there are have uh, several uh, van der Waals force in inhibitor and Brazilian and metal Brazilian compound. Also the uh, also the hydrogen and hydrophobic interaction, but on Brazilian and triometal Brazilian, but not in the uh, positive control, indicating that the Brazilian and triometal Brazilian more uh, tight or tighter than the positive control. control. And then the conclusion of this study, uh, based on the pharmacokinetic study, yeah. ph pharmacokinetic study characterized more soluble, uh, metal, three or metal Brazilian, more soluble in water, higher intestinal absorption, lower CNS permeability, lower PDSS and unburned fraction, and lower LG50, <coughs> and potentially uh, as drug, uh, drug formula for the future study, and 3D complex review, Brazilian and three or metal Brazilian inhibited JAK3 at, at inhibitor site, and short similar mechanism with the inhibitor compound. Thank you uh, for the opportunity. I will back to the moderator. Hey, thank you, Devi. Thank you for your informative presentation. And our next speaker is from University of Lambang Mangkwat, Indonesia, Dr. Juliatin Putri Utam. Title of presentation is Anti-inflammatory effects of Chana microfilms extracts through NF copper B and TNF alpha in diabetic rats. So, Ms. Dami, please start your presentation. Okay, thank you very much for the opportunity. I would like to present um, my research. Uh, the topic is about uh, anti-inflammatory effects of Kana micropel test extract through a nuclear factor kappa B and tumor necrosis factor alpha in diabetic rat. And this is my team. I'm Juliatin Putri Utami from Lambung Mangkurat University Banjarmasin, Indonesia. This is my background. As we know that Indonesia is ranked the sixth highest diabetes mellitus in the world based on the International uh, Diabetes Federation 2017. And uh, diabetes mellitus itself is a disorder of carbohydrate, fat, and protein metabolism caused by impaired insulin secretion, insulin action, or both characterized by hyperglycemia. And uh, if there is a chronic hyperglycemia, uh, it will uh, begin uh, with a cytokine infiltration into vascular tissue and uh, inhibition of tissue function and repair. And uh, it is related to a uh, delayed uh, wound healing in diabetes mellitus. And you know that um, uh, these mechanisms can, um, including some uh, pro-inflammatory cytokines, and uh, such as uh, NF kappa B and uh, TNF alpha, and uh, one of diabetic uh, one therapies. 
can be applied by uh, controlling the inflammation process. Inflammation can be controlled by giving food supplements. One of the candidate of food supplements uh, is Cana micropeltes extract. Okay. Cana micropeltes is one of organism from uh, Kalimantan and uh, it contains um, albumin, omega-3, uh, omega-6 fat acids, and amino acids. And the previous study revealed that cannabis extract at a dose of 16 milliliters per kilogram body weight could completely cause wounds and wound constriction uh, in normal vista rats on the seven days and diabetic rats on uh, 14 days. And this study aimed to analyze the effect of cannabis micropeltes extra on the levels of molecular markers and FKPB and TNF uh, alpha in the wound healing process of normal and diabetic rats. And for the methods, um, we use uh, 24 uh, rats uh, with star male rats, and now uh, we we are divided into the group divided into four groups: uh, normal rats, and then the uh, diabetic rats with canamicropeltes extract, and diabetic rats um, without extract, and the normal rats with canamicropeltes uh, extract. And for the treatment, um, until 14 days, and uh, we do the termination and collect the blood from intracardial and uh, analyze using ELISA method. And for the result, we can see that um, NF kappa B in the diabetes mellitus group has the highest level of uh, NF kappa B uh, compared to the other group. And the uh, uh, diabetes mellitus with the kind of micropel test extract has lower uh, value uh, compared to the diabetes mellitus group. And at the normal group, we can see here that the normal group with the kind of micropel test extract um, show the lower uh, value uh, than uh, the normal group. And for TNF alpha level, we can see um, diabetes mellitus uh, in the diabetes mellitus group has the highest uh, score of TNF alpha. And the group of diabetes mellitus with kind of micropeltes extra uh, lower level of TNF alpha. And the uh, normal and the normal with the kind of micropeltes um, showed uh, not to a uh, difference, but the level of TNF alpha at the normal group with the kind of micropel test showed the lower level than the normal group. Uh, it is related to the kind of micropel test extract compounds itself, uh, which is uh, contains fatty acid. Um, that there are 29.62% uh, uh, saturated fatty acid and uh, 27.81% uh, of uh, total unsaturated uh, fatty acid. And um, previous research uh, revealed that omega-3 as a polyunsaturated fatty acid can inhibit like uh, receptor 4 and it's a downstream cascade including nuclear factor capability. So it can cause a decrease in pro-inflammatory cytokines, such as TNF alpha also. And um, polyunsaturated fatty acid itself, uh, such as uh, linolenic acid, docosahexaenoic acid, omega-3, and eicosapentaenoic acid can reduce nf kappa b in inflammatory conditions. The kind of micropeltes extract um, also contains amino acid that have anti-inflammatory properties that can inhibit anti-inflammatory cytokines through the nf kappa b uh, pathway. We conclude that the kind of micropeltes extract uh, at those 16 uh, milliliters every kilogram body weight uh, for 14 days in the one healing process of Vista Red can reduce nf kappa b and TNF alpha in groups of normal and diabetic rats. 
uh, but it still needs more evaluation of other markers mechanism that related to uh, this uh, anti-inflammatory process. Thank you very much. Okay, thank you very much, Ms. Tommy. It was such a wonderful presentation. Thank you again. And our next presenter is from National Research and Innovation Agency, Indonesia, Ms. Hariyatun Hariyatun. Title of presentation is Design of Multifunctional Engineered Module Endolition as a Tailor-Made Antimicrobial Candidate for Streptococcal and Staphylococcal Infections. Ms. Hariyatun, please begin when you're ready. I would like to uh, present our research and uh, Assalamu'alaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Good afternoon, everyone. Uh, first of all, thank you very much uh, for the time and opportunity. My name is Hariyatun. I am from Research Center for Genetic Engineering, National Research and Innovation Agency, uh, BRIN. And here I would like to present our research entitled Design of multifunctional engineered modular endolysin as a tyromet antimicrobial candidate for streptococcal and staphylococcal infections. As we know, uh, streptococci and staphylococci uh, uh, belongs to uh, belong to the gram-positive bacterial pathogens, and these pathogens can cause diverse human and animal uh, diseases such as. Uh, bovine mastitis and then skin tissue or joint infections, uh, bacteremia and uh, neonatal sepsis. Uh, further, these infections could, ca could cause the systemic infections, uh, co-infections uh, with, for example, SARS-CoV-2 deaths and outbreaks. And uh, moreover, it could also uh, leads to the high economic burdens, uh, especially, especially uh, regarding to the medical costs. And antibiotic therapy for this in infections often unsuccessful and this could contribute to the development of antibiotic resistant threats. And therefore uh, the alternative uh, antibiotic the alternative to antibiotic for this uh, infection need uh, to be uh, improved. Here, bacteriophage modu modular endolysin is one of the promising antimicrobial uh, since uh, the bacteriophage modular endolysin uh, has the characteristic as the peptidoglycan hydrolase, which could uh, lyse the peptidoglycan uh, of the cell wall of the uh, bacterial pathogens. Uh, and it has the characteristic of highly pathogen specificity and unlikely to evoke antimicrobial resistance. And uh, this modular endolysin characterized by modular ar architecture, which uh, open the potential for engineering to develop the engineered modular endolysin. The engineering of modular endolysin uh, could be performed with uh, several techniques such as mutations and truncations, and then chimeric uh, or recombination or domain swapping of the uh, domain of the, in the endolysin and also fusion with non-indolysin domains such as uh, other protein, uh, peptides, or nanoparticles. This engineering of modular endolysins could enhance the synergistic effect and uh, also maintain the parental specificities. Uh, and in this research, we developed the engineering of modular endolysin by utilizing the 
enzymatic uh, activity and cell wall binding domain of the streptococcal VCG uh, endolysin and the enzymatic activity domain of the streptococcal lambda SA2. And this uh, modular design uh, we constructed into the uh, into the uh, expression vector, uh, which based uh, of uh, with, with which based on the Ramnos space promoter uh, expression system. So, uh, the, the the objectives of this research is to develop the design of multifunctional engineered modular endolysin as a tailor-made antimicrobial candidate targeting both streptococcal and staphylococcal infections. The second one is to investigate the multifunctional engineered modular endolysin expression in Escherichia coli NICO 21 de 3 using a Ramnos based tightly regulated expression system, as well as its purification and characterization. And the uh, research methods uh, is uh, first we conducted the in, in silico design and analysis, and we retrieved the database of the gene encoding the modular endolysin uh, we used and also the protein screen from GeneBank or NCBI and Uniprot respectively. And then we uh, obtained the codon optimized synthetic gene uh, or expression assets, namely PD864SR, E lambda CVV from ATUM. And then we conducted the modeling simulation and the the sulfate bond analysis using Raptor X and Pymol. And subsequently, we conducted the molecular docking simulation using one click docking with, uh, auto -do uh, with autodocrina uh, integrated in it. And then we analyzed the allergenicity uh, of the protein that we have designed. And then we conducted the target gene expression, protein purification, and characterization. And the plasmid multiplication uh, is conducted, was conducted in E. coli top 10 frame, frame. And then gene expression was performed at in E. coli NICO 21D3 under optimized conditions. And we uh, also extract the, extracted the protein soluble and insoluble protein and uh, the protein resulted from the expression uh, we purified uh, and reporting using the cobalt purification and on column reporting using cobalt immuno, uh, immo immobilized metal affinity chromatography and then the re protein results were was characterized using western blood the results of the uh, in silico design uh, of the expression cassettes pd 864 sr and uh, which consists of uh, e lambda cv uh, consists of the ra bad promoter and then uh, enzymatically active domain of the lambda sa2 and cbd and ead of the VCG. And in this construct uh, also consists of the uh, several resist restriction sites uh, in the position uh, that, uh, as shown in the picture. And these restriction sites have the uh, overhang which uh, similar, which can uh, facilitate the design of the further uh, improvement of the uh, engineer modular endolysis in the next uh, research. And also the construct consists of the stack uh, to facilitate the detection and purification of the protein. And the last, the construct also contain the linker uh, to spare it, the, uh, it, to spare it its domain to facilitate facilitated the spatial distance for the uh, conformation of the protein. 
and the, uh, this is uh, the example of the uh, further uh, improve, uh, improvement or other uh, derived uh, engineer in indolation using uh, the basic contracts construct uh, of uh, our first design. Uh, the results of the protein modeling and molecular docking as follows. Uh, the protein modeling uh, results show that uh, the stack uh, remain accessible uh, for the facilitation of the detection and purification. Uh, here are our uh, E-Lambda CPEV design. Uh, it's uh, the stack is maintain uh, accessible compared to the uh, constituent or to the respective constituent or parental modular endolysin. And, and the protein modeling also saw the, uh, cons uh, the, uh, the confirmation of the protein uh, do not contain the disulfid bond and it uh, will uh, give easier uh, refolding condition uh, of the protein. And then the molecular docking uh, result of the uh, domain, its domain uh, with its respective uh, ligand showed that uh, generally the hydrophobic interaction and uh, hydrogen bond uh, binding uh, is, uh, were formed. Uh, between the uh, amino acids uh, surrounding the uh, ligand. And uh, from the delta and free energy gyps, uh, it thought that uh, the uh, activity, uh, enzymatically activity of the e lambda CVEV uh, relatively maintained uh, compared to the uh, constituent or uh, parental uh, modular endolysin. And uh, also the cell wall binding uh, activity uh, here relatively uh, increased uh, compared to the constituent or parental in modular endolysin. Moreover, the analysis of uh, allergenicity showed that uh, from the full faster sliding 18 mer window and 8 mer exact match, the identity of uh, its uh, constituent or parental modular endolysin and also our uh, modular multifunctional modular endolysin design uh, has the uh, low, lower value uh, uh, compared to the uh, value that. Uh, potentially can induce uh, the allergenic reactions. So this um, multifunctional design uh, has no possibility to elicit allergenic reactions. And uh, it's, uh, and we conclude that it's safe for medical and also uh, food applications. And uh, from, from the target gene expression uh, results, uh, we could uh, see that the protein uh, expressed uh, was expressed as a as insoluble protein uh, in all of the protein uh, um, and that we design or uh, the constituent or parental uh, modular endolysin and here the uh, modu uh, multifunctional modular endolysin that we design have the, has the uh, higher expression level compared to the parental or constituent modular endolysin. And from the election fraction, uh, this result uh, showed that uh, the protein has been successfully copper purified and on column refolded, uh, which uh, here in the election fraction, of the multifunctional endolysin also has the higher uh, higher uh, level uh, compared to the uh, constituent or parental modular endolysin. But uh, 
uh, we still need further in vitro activity aside to verify in the recombinant protein uh, functionality. To conclude, uh, the multifunctional engineer modular embolism expression of the set PDH64SR in lambda CVEV has been successful, successfully designed. And then the multifunctional engineer modular endolysin has been successfully expressed in E. coli NICO 21D3 as insoluble protein with a molecular weight of approximately 48.2 kilodalton and has also been successfully coupled, purified, and on column refolded. This result could raise the, the possibility of multifunctional engineered modular endolysin production as a thylomid antimicrobial candidate for streptococcal and staphylococcal infections. This result could also encourage further design and expression studies for other engineered modular endolysin generations, which may also find application as thylomid antimicrobial candidates using different modular endolysin source or other proteins or uh, peptides or uh, nanoparticles. And last but not least, I would like to thank to the Indonesia Torres Science Foundation uh, that uh, that was, uh, that gave the funding for our research. And I think this is the end of my presentation. Thank you very much for your uh, attention. Hey, Ms. Hariatun, thank you for your presentation. Thank you. Thank you. And now uh, we'd like to introduce the last speaker of this session from Brawijaya University, Indonesia, Dr. Sri Rahai. Title of presentation is Effect of Water Clover Extract on SOD1 and NLF2 Expression Level of Male Rat Testis. Dr. Ryu, please feel free to begin your presentation. Thank you to moderator. Uh, time for me. Uh, good afternoon, uh, everybody. Uh, today I will present our experiment uh, entitled uh, "The Effect of Water Cover or Marcellia Strenata Extract on SUD1 and RR2 Expression Level of the Red Testes." Uh, this is our uh, team. Mm. Uh, I'm away from biology department. Uh, Excuse me, could you Excuse start me? with presentation mode, live show mode? Oh, oh, let me. Um, Dr. Sri Rahayu, could you push the slideshow? Slide show button is on uh, middle top of uh, window. Yes, now it's okay. Oh, uh, yeah. Are you hear uh, my voice? Sure, it's clear. Oh, okay. Thank you. Uh, I'm sorry because uh, uh, the voice not. Uh, 
not clear. Okay, I will uh, uh, try to present uh, again. Uh, thank, uh, good afternoon, everybody. Thank you for the time for me to present our experiment uh, entitled uh, The Effect of Water Clover Extract on SOD1 and NRF2 Expression Level of Melrep uh, Testis. This is our uh, our team, uh, and I'm from Biology Department, uh, Prawijaya University. Uh, first, I will uh, try to explain about the uh, the testis. Uh, we know that. Uh, mammalian testis is uh, primary male reproductive organ uh, because there are uh, two functions uh, of the testis is uh, for spermatogenesis the process to produce the sperm cell and the second second function of the testis is uh, for spermatogenesis uh, to produce uh, testosterone hormone and uh, this hormone uh, is very important for uh, male uh, reproduction. Uh, during spermatogenesis and uh, stereogenesis, a number of uh, reactive oxygen uh, species or uh, usually called of uh, ROS are produced as a result of uh, metabolism. And uh, some of the uh, physiology of the uh, testes uh, meet uh, ROS uh, in small uh, level. Uh, so uh, the production of uh, ROS is very uh, important for uh, physiology of the testes. But um, in a certain uh, condition, uh, as, uh, for example, uh, the lifestyle and maybe uh, disease will uh, increase the uh, ROS uh, level. A high level of ROS uh, can cause oxidative uh, stress, uh, which has an impact on uh, DNA uh, fragmentation and decrease the membrane uh, integrity. This will result a decrease in sperm uh, quality, for example, uh, the uh, decrease of the motility, uh, viability, and uh, might be a cause of the uh, abnormal abnormality of the uh, uh, morphology uh, of sperm cell. Uh, good sperm quality is one of the factors that determine the success of a uh, fertility uh, system. So sperm quality need to be maintained for uh, are improved uh, to uh, to support the uh, fertility uh, of uh, of mill. Uh, 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 beside the physiology of the uh, testes, uh, spermatogenesis and uh, sterogenesis, uh, sperm abnormality uh, morphology can increase the ROS uh, production too. Uh, and usually correlation with spontaneous uh, abortion uh, when fertilization uh, occur. So uh, maintain, maintaining uh, the ROS level is important to support the normal sperm uh, function. Uh, Indonesia uh, has uh, more then uh, 30,008 uh, plant with a potential use as traditional herbal medicine. Water clover uh, uh, is one uh, of them. And water clover uh, usually uh, in Surabaya, uh, uh, some community uh, consume this uh, leaf of the uh, water clover. Uh, based, uh, based on our experiment before, uh, uh, we found that uh, there are many uh, flavonoids uh, contained on the uh, Marsilia serenata or 
uh, some people uh, call uh, as semanggi uh, air and this is uh, very famous in uh, Surabaya city uh, pecel uh, semanggi uh, next Uh, we choose SOD1 uh, for analyze because SOD1 is uh, antioxidant uh, endocrine and uh, very important to uh, control the rose uh, level in the uh, organ, uh, especially in the uh, testes. Uh, 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 many experiments show that uh, to induction the uh, expression of SOD1 beside the cross level and the flavonoid can uh, can uh, induction of the SOD1 uh, SOD1 or uh, some of the antioxidant uh, endocrine uh, express because uh, some flavonoid uh, can interact with uh, protein uh, type 1 uh, that in the in active uh, condition, uh, protein type one uh, interaction with uh, NRF two. Uh, so if, uh, if uh, some of molecule can uh, inhibit the interaction of the type one and NRF two, NRF two will move to the cell and uh, as. Uh, transcription factor uh, to produce a uh, two expression of the uh, in, uh, antioxidant uh, endocrine. Based on the result, I want to know uh, how uh, the role of the Marcella Srenata uh, to, to induction expression of the uh, SOD1 and uh, NRF2 uh, level. Uh, this is the objective uh, of our uh, experiment and the benefit of uh, our experiment to support the success of the local plant utilization as herbal medicine, especially to related to reproductive health. Uh, our experiment uh, use uh, 44 mil rats and uh, divided into four group uh, control uh, normal rat without any treatment and uh, PS1, uh, PS2, and PS3, which uh, treated uh, with uh, ethanol extract uh, of Marcellia serenata, which does uh, this one, this one, and this one for. 20 for uh, 30, 30 days. In uh, uh, the end of the uh, treatment, uh, the testes of the red was dispersed using a sterile uh, spread and was filtered to uh, analyze uh, by using a flow uh, cytometry to analyze the expression uh, level of NRF2 and SOD1 uh, for uh, the testes. Uh, with the chemical analysis uh, of uh, Marcella Strenata, uh, we found that uh, there is uh, many uh, compounds, uh, including the quercetin, pinistain, gallic acid, apinganin, and uh, nari uh, 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 This This uh, figure so that uh, that SOD1 uh, expression and NR2 expression so that uh, treatment with uh, uh, with 0 0.432 milligram uh, per uh, gram body weight uh, have uh, expression of SOD1 uh, higher than uh, another. Uh, uh, but uh, for NRF2, for, for NRF2, uh, the, the, the group, uh, uh, the expression is uh, lower. This is, I 
uh, this is maybe uh, because when the NRF2 uh, spirit which uh, give one in the uh, cytoplasma, uh, the NRF2 will move to uh, uh, nucleus. So when uh, we analyze uh, by using the flow cytometry, uh, uh, the NRF2 can interact with the antibody. So uh, actually, uh, uh, this result so that uh, that the treatment of the extract uh, Marcella serenata can, can uh, inhibit interaction uh, between NRF2 and GIG1 uh, and, uh, and will uh, move to uh, nucleus, uh, nucleus and, uh, and, uh, in, and uh, induction the expression of the uh, as uh, OD1 uh, antioxidant. Uh, this uh, result uh, in line with, uh, with uh, our experiment uh, before, uh, we found that the extract of the uh, Marcellia serenata uh, with dose of uh, 43.2 uh, will uh, increase the seminiferous uh, tubuh diameter, gem uh, layer thickness, and number of the, uh, the spermatogenic uh, cell. Uh, this condition uh, so that the spermatogenesis of the uh, animal, uh, of the uh, uh, animal uh, better than uh, without uh, treatment. Uh, 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 this is we we assume we, uh, because uh, there are uh, many flavonoids in the Marcella serenata, and uh, they can as uh, uh, they can as uh, uh, antioxidant uh, endocrine and uh, and uh, uh, will will improve the spermatogenesis. spermatogenesis. Uh, the same result uh, uh, in our experiment. So uh, that uh, Marcellinata serenata, Marcellia serenata uh, ethanol extract, when uh, uh, treated on the uh, uh, animal experiment, will result the uh, the increasing the sperm quality, uh, including the motility, uh, sperm count, and uh, viability, and uh, will decreasing the abnormality of the uh, sperm cell. Uh, this is maybe because there are uh, many uh, flavonoids, uh, many flavonoids as uh, antioxidant uh, exogen and uh, mm, to protect uh, the effect of the uh, ROS uh, that produce uh, that produce uh, during the uh, testis uh, physiology, uh, as uh, I, I I explained uh, before. Uh, the conclusion uh, our experiment uh, that the Marcella serenata as uh, antioxidant shots and can uh, increasing the uh, SOD1 and activate the NRF2 uh, as uh, transcription factor to uh, SOD1 uh, or antioxidant endocrine expression. And uh, the second of uh, our conclusion that uh, Marcella Serenata has potency as uh, fertility uh, action. Uh, it's all. Thank you for uh, the attention. Hey, Dr. Ryu, thank you for your uh, presentation. Uh, you show the in vivo result of this uh, in this experiment, and I think it's very important to show the in vivo data when you do such kind of uh, experiments. So I think this is very informative uh, work. Thank you very much. Okay, um, now I'd like to open the uh, discussion time for 
uh, this, these five presentations now. But uh, I'm sorry, we are short on time. So uh, is there any question from audience? I, we already have some questions by chat. And uh, sorry. Um, I think there's one question to Devi, but she also always already answered to this question. And some questions to Dr. Juryatin, if you want to see, but she also already answered to these questions. Any, any more questions? Question to Dr. Enda. Normal rats with CM can reduce the inflammatory cytokine, but from statistical analysis, the result is not significant. I still didn't know what the next effect if with the level of these markers be lower. Maybe I have to observe more of this. Thank you. Dr. Enda, do you have any comments or answer to this question? Okay, I think it's enough. Just wondering, is it safe for consuming every day <laughs> if we are healthy? Any other comments? No more questions from participants? Okay, now I'd like to close this session now. So thank you for your contributions today. And uh, now I... I hope to see you all next year in Milan online. Thank you very much for joining us today. Excellencies, distinguished guests, participants, ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to the main room. We are glad that all of presentation for eSmart FOB has been finished and this conference almost come to the very end. We truly wish you have found the presentation at this conference are informative and helpful. Ladies and gentlemen, 
a smart FOB 2022 wouldn't have been possible without all of your support and participation. With our greatest appreciation, we would like to present the eSmart FOB Awards for the best presenter and participants. Okay, the best participants of eSmart IFOB Awards goes to from University of Tsukuba, Japan, Ms. Juliatin Putri Utami from Universitas Lampung, Mangkurat, and Nabila Nur Roshada from Universitas Okay, I'm sorry for the technical things. And we will next uh, for the best participant of eSmart IFOB Awards. And for the best participant goes to Mr. Eko Suyanto from Universitas Brawijaya. Oh, I'm sorry, from SUT University, Thailand. Okay, thank you very much. And for the certificates of best participants and best presenter will be sent by organizing committee for details. Congratulations to all winners. Let's give our appreciation to all presenters and participants who have dedicated their time and energy even in their busy schedules. It has truly been an honor to host this event. Please give a round of big applause once again. And at the close of this conference, we would like to invite Dr. Nia Kurnianingsi as ISMA Chairman and the Honorable Professor Fatkia as the Head of Spoon Against to give a closing speech and forward closing recitation prayer. Oke, okay. Alhamdulillah. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Good afternoon for all of you, uh, the active participant, uh, ISMAT FOB uh, 2022. Uh, firstly, on behalf of the committee of fourth uh, ISMAT and FOB, 2022 and also Simonagen Research Center team. I am delighted uh, to deliver this closing remark on the success of the fourth ISMAT 
uh, and I believe uh, during this today, uh, we have a insightful interactive discussion and a uh, great chance to share our research and knowledge. Uh, I'm really appreciate for all of you, uh, not only for keynote speaker, uh, and also participant and moderator, and special for committee uh, for great contribution and uh, looking forward to seeing to seeing you uh, for the next coming year in five is months at uh, 2023. A special thing also I see in this uh, room. Uh, online room is uh, Professor Miyajima, I think, in there. Thank you very much, uh, Professor Sasase and Professor Renu. Uh, thank you for uh, your contribution in this meeting. I hope next year you can visit in Malang and directly talk uh, in this uh, meeting for next coming year. Uh, and also congratulations for the, the best presenter and the active uh, participant uh, for this meeting. Hopefully we can enjoy in Malang uh, next year together and go to Promo Mountain <laughs> because close with the Malang. Okay. Uh, thank you very much, and I would like to close uh, this meeting as the master ceremony said uh, with uh, Alhamdulillah in Bahasa Arab, eh, Bahasa Arab in Arabia <laughs> language. So God bless us uh, for today's meeting. Uh, again, thank you very much, uh, and enjoy your time for uh, your uh, day activity. Wassalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Thank you. Goodbye for everyone. Bye, Putrini. <laughs> Bye, Miyajima Sang. Tasaki Sang. Bye bye. Okay, thank you, Professor Fakia, for the closing speech. And ladies and gentlemen, we are already at the end of our conference. And let's we spend a few seconds to pray uh, as the successful of this event. The pray is welcome. Finish. Thank you. On behalf of the organizing committee, I'm Ahmad Hanif Naufal from Brawijaya University Malang, extend our appreciation to every one of you for the attending of this event. We sincerely apologize for any inconveniences and our shortcomings. We are wishing you all the best. Stay safe, healthy, and happy. Looking forward to seeing all of you next and the next on the next year on 5th is smart fob 2023 wassalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh bye bye
the first international seminar on smart molecule of natural resources 2019 in Malang, Indonesia. Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Uh, the smart 2019 uh, officially open. the more sophisticated instrument in Thailand, so... When you tell science, your silica content is so low. Because, for some reason, your silica will also evaporate in a different form. Mereka melihat bahwa Adam Dias is actually inducing apoptosis and killing the cells uh, via apoptosis. the interaction between these two domain that make this domain start to convert and change the conformation. So the molecular structure is in the dark side, so sometimes it's difficult to understand. Please. 